Assalamu alaikum, uh, good morning, namaskaram uh, um, uh, everybody. Um, we are doing our next um, Excel UK and CG uh, Tech Talks, uh, as you know the topic and all of you are eagerly waiting for it. Um, just to give you a brief idea of how the program is going to be. By the way, I'm Dr. Riaz um, and I'm not a techie by the way. Uh, we have a very excellent uh, program um, in, in line for you. Um, and um, just to give an idea of what the program is going to be. The program, as you know, is in two sections. One is about the talks. Um, so we're going to talk about big data and, uh, and data science. Um, the initial two talks, just to set the scene. Uh, and after that, we'll have a very interactive uh, question answer session with our expert group of panelists. Um, so uh, just to make the, um, so that the program goes very smoothly, uh, we just like to ask all of you to uh, mute yourself. Please don't unmute yourself. Uh, I will disable the, uh, you know, participants able to mute option so that uh, in the interest of the talks go to, goes on very smoothly. Um, and when we reach the Q&A session, roughly about uh, 50 minutes to one hour, we will have the question and answer session. And when we start the Q&A session, um, what, I, uh, what I encourage all of you to do is as we do the talks, please type all your questions in the chat window. You know, there's a chat window in the bottom. If you scroll down in the bottom, there's a chat window. And on the chat window, please type all your questions as and when they come. Uh, the panelists will try to answer the questions uh, back on the chat window um, or some of the questions we'll try to answer on the Q&A discussion. So there's no questions immediately after the talks. All the questions will be in the Q&A session. Uh, and um, there, are, there are options for also options for you to um, answer the questions, uh, sorry, to ask questions directly at the end of the Q&A session. So if you just uh, use the option of raise hand, uh, raise your hand and then, um, you know, you can ask, uh, we, we can see that you're wanting to ask a question. And when we do that, the moderators will have a look and, and un unmute you and you can ask the question. That's to the, towards the very end. So the format of Q&A will be, uh, question and answer sessions will be in three, will be, which will be uh, described to you at the start of the Q&A session. Uh, one gentle request to all of you is, uh, if you're coming signing on with your devices, any device, just make sure that you have your own name. Ch change your name to your, your name, not the device name, because uh, there is hacking problems with, uh, with, with Zoom. So we want to ensure that the right people are entering uh, the program. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll hand over to um, uh, Sekhar Saib uh, to, to start the meeting. Welcome, dears. Good morning and uh, good afternoon. CG, Center for Information and Guidance India, and EXL UK are jointly organizing the show, as you already know. And this is the second in the series for the information of those who are <laughs> not present uh, for the last show and today's topic is as you know for the newcomers data science and big data the keynote speakers are mr siyad kandampilakan mr mohammed mamajiwara and others in the program include dr km priyas abdullah whom you have just met mr abdul salam kundumal mr shabir mr babu shah mr nemshi and Mr. Robas M. Putin. Now, this is the time for the inauguration. Dr. Zete Ashraf, General Secretary, Center for Information and Guidance India, Fiji, will inaugurate the program. The dedicated social worker is a professor in statistics in a government college in Calicut. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Good morning and good afternoon. First of all, uh, I would like to appreciate Dr. Siddiq Kulakul and Dr. Riyas and his team of uh, Excel okay, for organizing a series of talk. I think this is, uh, as I guess I told, this is the second one and the first one was on the last week. And today we opted a very current relevant topic also, the data science and big data. We have two eminent uh, experts in that area, Mr. Riyad and Mr. Mohammed. Uh, on behalf of CG, let me again welcome the faculty members, the panelists, and other participants to this program. And the topic that we, uh, we are discussing today, as we all know, is on data. Uh, it is a uh, uh, we, we all know that the, data, the term data is a very old term and even in before BC 4000 or 5000 
people collected data and analyzed it, especially in Babylonian civilization in uh, China and many other places, all civilizations. People use the data for analyzing and for the well-being of the people of that country. But recently, all the scenario changed uh, with the production of the information technology and computing technology. Now we recently uh, uh, heard about this the concept of big data. Usually, when people think about the big, we will uh, say that something which is large. But uh, we all know that big data doesn't mean only the size of the data, but more than that, uh, there are many things included in the characteristics of the data. Uh, we usually call it as the four Vs of the big data, that is the velocity of the data, how frequent, how fast the data is changing, and the volume of the data, of course. Uh, uh, earlier, we handled only uh, some uh, minimal level of data for the analysis purpose. But now the huge nature of the data is a uh, point of discussion and uh, need of uh, analysis. And uh, the, uh, the uh, veracity of the data, the reliability of the data, and the value of the data, what is the output that we are getting from the data. All these things are combined in the big data concept. Therefore, uh, data science is becoming more and more uh, relevant in the current days, uh, academics as well as in the business industry field. The for the topic that uh, you have chosen here is the very relevant one uh, as CG. Center for International Guidance India is a voluntary uh, non governmental organization uh, working for popularizing the uh, uh, knowledge among the public, especially those who are marginalized or sidelined. Uh, we are very happy to uh, organize, we are happy to be a part of this uh, lecture series along with uh, Excel UK. And again, once again, I thank Excel UK for organizing this program. Uh, uh, with these words, let me declare the discussion has been open. Thank you. Uh, I think let me, uh, uh, Dr. Siddiq Kulakur will lead this uh, uh, session. I invite Dr. Siddiq Kulakur to uh, carry over the uh, activities. Thank you, uh, Zakaria Saab and uh, Dr. Uh, Ashraf, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, you know making this happen with your support from CG and uh, all the other uh, involved. Now, uh, uh, the, the session already, uh, Dr. Riaz gave you a brief introduction about the, how we are going to uh, conduct the uh, session, which I will uh, go through it again uh, briefly. Before that, just uh, let me uh, give you a brief introduction about uh, Excel. Uh, okay. I think there is somewhere uh, some disturbance. Uh, if everybody can mute their, their mic, please. Everybody, all the speakers uh, mute their mic. All the speakers. Is all the uh, speakers mute their mic, or maybe someone else is listening through the uh, YouTube? There is a disturbance. Uh, uh, Rubas, can you see where the disturbance is? Okay, I think it's better now. Okay. Yeah, just to uh, give you a brief introduction about uh, Excel uh, UK. Excel UK is the uh, uh, training or uh, educational uh, wing of uh, Kerala Association of Muslim Professional in UK. That's uh, you know, popularly known as uh, in a camp uh, here in UK. And we do a lot of uh, activities with uh, in UK and also uh, charitable and other act educational activities in uh, in Kerala and uh, you know India. Now our main uh, activities uh, include uh, uh, knowledge sharing, uh, skill development, uh, career and uh, advice and uh, support. And uh, for both just the uh, uh, you know uh, people in UK but also you know outside uh, UK. Now uh, one of the I think uh, Camp and the uh, Excel UK is one of the biggest. Uh, a professional group uh, coming from uh, Kerala in UK. And there are uh, quite uh, heavy in achievers in this group, whether they are uh, in a big post in uh, hospitals and consultants and other uh, uh, organizational administrative posts in universities and IT professionals and all the uh, you know, walks of life that are very uh, big achievers. Now, let me tell you, all these people are from uh, Kerala or from India with uh, most of them with a very uh, modest uh, start, maybe, uh, you know, from a small village in Kerala, 
they came uh, good went to a, a government school or maybe even had a, some financial hardship but they uh, made their way up here with a sheer uh, determination motivation and also uh, support from uh, different groups and uh, in our community and uh, people all the way along now uh, what i would like to uh, see is that this is not only a just not a, a knowledge sharing uh, a program but also i hope uh, these kind of a programs will motivate uh, some of you are uh, uh, listening there to this talk and uh, i would like to uh, say that uh, the, you have a if you once you have your motivation and your determination there is a lot of support available from various uh, people even from some unknown sources you can imagine you cannot imagine now whether it is cg or excel uk or whoever it is and uh, i would like to see uh, hope and uh, some of you are here in next few years you will be part of this program and uh, conduct this kind of program now with that uh, introduction let me just uh, introduce our uh, speakers we have uh, two excellent speakers one is uh, dr mr siad uh, kadam belakal and uh, mohammed uh, mamajiwala siad is uh, from uh, uh, of course he is from uh, kerala and he is uh, has a special interest in uh, data uh, big data and he has a uh, 16 years of experience in the industry he has a masters in computer application and worked for uh, one of the major uh, uh, companies in the world like uh, Poly, uh, Sony, PlayStation, SSC Energy, Hiscox, uh, Viola, and uh, Nogin Pharmaceuticals. And he's also an a, a important member of our uh, uh, camp and Excel UK. He's uh, one of our uh, you know, big um, organizers and part of our executive team. Now, obviously, he's going to uh, talk about uh, big data, which I don't know much about. Uh, of course, uh, he will, uh, you know, going to uh, uh, tell us all about what is this uh, big data is now our next uh, speaker is uh, Mohammed uh, Mamajiwala he is from Pune and he is in UK now and uh, probably he's the only uh, one non Malayali uh, in this uh, panel he's also a big expert in the big data architect and engineer and he has a master degree in uh, computer management he worked again with some of the biggest uh, IT companies in the world like Sendrika, Vodafone, HSB, HSBC Bank and British Telecom and uh, Sony uh, PlayStation. So I just uh, both welcome and these uh, both expert panels and we have another uh, group of expert panels which will be introduced uh, uh, towards a, a program when the next question answer session comes. Now just before I just remind uh, what Dr. Riaz uh, gave in the uh, beginning uh, the talk is going to be about uh, 40 to 50 minutes, but they share the uh, platform for next 50 minutes. And at the end of, we'll have a elaborate question answer session. Now, please, uh, there won't be any kind of interruption for any uh, question during the talk, but please do uh, put your questions in the chat room. I think all of you can uh, see the, uh, if you browse your uh, you know, phone or uh, device, you will be able to see the, uh, a chat window somewhere on the phone and then uh, please uh, write your questions some of the question may be answered as it goes by one of the uh, panelists but otherwise all the question will be answered at the end of the session and uh, you will also get a chance if you want to ask instead of typing a question if you would like to uh, ask the question directly please uh, raise your hand uh, there is a provision in the uh, system for you to raise the hand and uh, those questions you'll be able to get an opportunity to ask a question directly now, other request is uh, please uh, keep your uh, mic mute all the time to avoid any uh, disturbance and background noise. And also please don't uh, sign up from two uh, devices uh, at the uh, you know, same time from the same area. That also can sometime uh, give a disturbance to the, uh, uh, into the, uh, you know, the system. Now, without uh, uh, much further ado, let me uh, welcome uh, Sia and uh, Mohammed uh, to start the talk. Thank you. Sia? Uh, hi, Siddhika. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, you're clear. Okay. Um, hope you can see my screen as well. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Siddhika. Thank you, Excel UK. Thank you, uh, Siji, for giving me the chance. Thank you, all the participants who joined in. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Siji and uh, Excel UK asked me to go uh, have a presentation on big data and uh, data analytics. Uh, I thought, okay, I'll do it. Uh, but I need to do it in one hour, which is a nearly impossible task. Um, so 
And I thought, okay, I'll add data science as well because, because it is an impossible task to say about big data or data analytics. Uh, I thought, okay, I'll reform the way I speak and what I speak because I can, instead of saying or teaching you what data science and big data is, my main focus on this uh, talk is to introduce data science and big data to you. Uh, and uh, Mohammed uh, will go through a small demo and he's a big data expert. And, uh, and the third section is, I have uh, divided into three segments. The first segment, an introduction to big data and data science. The second one is um, big data by Mohammed. And the third one will be uh, a bit about the career choices, uh, what you need to learn and how to become a data scientist or big data or data science expert. Because I always thought um, I will never be able to teach you anything in, the, in this short time, but I can guide you to get something in your life if you are aspiring a career in big data and data science. So that's, uh, that's, that's the main intention from my side. I remember my school days, somebody said, um, one of the teachers said, in the near future, you can be able to uh, see the other person's face uh, when you are talking. And I was amazed, is it going to be possible? And, and I, maybe after a few more years, and when I was in a plus two, uh, that time I heard, you can touch the computer at the screen and tell that the computer to do something. And you can type on the, the screen as well. Again, at that time, it was very interesting. Uh, it is just 20 years ago. And uh, if I tell you this, many of you, if you are on your 20s and if, uh, if you are on 20s and, and, and your early teens, you never understand what I'm saying because the technology is advanced or changed that much in the last uh, 10 years. And what is the change? Uh, why it has changed uh, drastically. It is amazing that if you look at now, it is amazing that I'm speaking to you using the spectacular technology. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in my home uh, just outside West London and Mohammed is sitting uh, one hour drive from me and you, of, many of you are sitting somewhere around the world, maybe in uh, uh, India, maybe in UK, maybe in somewhere in the Middle East or any part of the world and you can hear and you can see. And, and look at me, I'm no, a bit nervous standing in front of you. It, it's, it looks like very, very normal or very, uh, just like I'm standing in a stage and uh, in, in front of you. So the technology is advanced uh, in the last 10, uh, 20 years that much. And what are the changes and why it is advanced a lot? And, and that actually caused uh, to have uh, a lot of data with us, a lot of uh, talks about big data. We need to use uh, big data and data science as well. So let me move to a small statistics, which is uh, the statistics is from uh, IDC, International Data Corporation. If you look at the last 10 years, how the data has grown in the world, it is actually in zeta bytes. You, you will be, you need to check what is zeta bytes. It's, it's not a small one. It, it, it goes a lot of zeros after one. So uh, if you look at the data in 2010, it's, it was uh, two zeta bytes of data in the world. And now uh, in, in a few years time, uh, you look at 50.5 zeta bytes and there is a 60% increase in the next five years as well. This is a prediction. And I don't have any data before that. Why? There is a big reason that there, there was not much data before 2010 in, in the world. Yes, you have a big library, a, a four-story library and full of books. But all that books can be put in, in one, uh, maybe gigabyte or a few gigabytes of data in, as, a, as a, in a digital form. But what happened in 2010? I'll give you a few, few incidents happened in that time. Uh, I, I can't go uh, uh, too much. Uh, one is actually the Apple. Apple started the, its iPhone, uh, the smartphone in 2007, the first uh, uh, smartphone. In 2009, uh, uh, I think uh, WhatsApp is started. Uh, and in 2010, 
uh, Samsung had its first Galaxy phone, and in that time as well, um, the 4G is invented as well. That is one of the main driver of creating more and more data. How it, how and why this is creating more data? If you look at your screen, and uh, if you everything is data in the screen what i'm speaking uh, it, 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 it is stored as a data it's a video file audio file and at the same time if you are touching the phone every click and every swipe on your phone is a data it is stored somewhere and uh, just be careful there will be a, a digital fingerprint uh, stored somewhere in the world whatever you do with your phone whatever you do with your a digital system and everything is data that is actually creating data one of the company i worked earlier in my career is the sony playstation and you all know that uh, playstation is a gaming company one of the most reputed gaming companies in the world and one of the project i worked along with my co-host um, is to track the online gaming user behavior what I was, we were tracking is every click in the uh, in, in your game. We will be we, we used to track and we analyze it, and we can find the behavior of the people who is playing particular game, who is playing, what age group is playing, what kind of game, and if they started, are they finishing it? Uh, what what age group? So if an age group, a teenager is starting a particular game, are they finishing it? Uh, or the same game if uh, a 50 year old man is starting is finishing it we, we, we do many other kind of uh, analysis and statistics as well like um, how much revenue we are making per game um, what uh, what how many trophies each people are getting how many hours of gaming how many hours they spend on games etc etc and that's one thing another thing is uh, if you, if you use your uh, facebook whatsapp and everything it's always data if you look at uh, uh, social media and WhatsApp. It's always data you, uh, because every click and everything, what you type, what, what you like and what you comment, this is all data. It is going there and somebody need to use it. That's that's important thing as well. And this is a small uh, chart, uh, so, sorry, a small picture. You can see uh, nowadays uh, what is the, the areas which are generating more and more data. You know the travel industry nowadays um, you have a lot of sensors, even in cars, uh, even in, uh, it's not about, we, we are not uh, talking about only aero uh, flights and etc. Because fans are sending data every second or every minute, uh, a lot of uh, sensor data they are sending. And if you look at um, the marketing side, number two, number three, healthcare. So if you look at healthcare, if a doctor wants to um, uh, monitor someone's heart, they put a, 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 a small device and he goes to sleep and come back in the morning and he can say that oh his heart rate the heart rate is very regular or there are some uh, variations which is abnormal or not and then the computer will tell you uh, tell him oh this is right or this is wrong what to do or what are the symptoms and it's the same way uh, if you look at uh, number four social media number five uh, sales and, uh, and automation and automation number six which is another uh, important uh, area now nowadays uh, the automatic uh, auto driven self driving cars are coming into market but to do that you need to get data and you need to produce data and you need to analyze and you need to give something back number seven is actually insurance and credit sector this is not only the sector we are using the data we are generating data there are a lot of other areas we are using the data and we are getting the data but I, I told you we. Uh, it is estimated that we have around um, uh, fifty point five uh, zettabytes of data as of now. Uh, one thing which has changed in the last uh, ten years dramatically is the number of unstructured data we are getting. Before that, uh, there was data in the computer industry. They were storing the data and when they were using it, but. That is called in a, in, a, in a form a structured form. What is a structured form? Simply, they put in, in the table as rows uh, and columns. That's a structured data. But for the last uh, 10 years, you look at, you're commenting, oh, this picture is very good. Or you're up uh, uploading a picture. You're uploading an audio or a video. And social media posts, books, Word documents, uh, PDFs, everything. 
So this is unstructured data. So somebody is com uh, commenting uh, or somebody is putting a review on some products. That's not a structured form, but uh, there are a lot of information in it. The company need to extract it and the company need to use it to analyze it. Uh, so that's where the unstructured. Just going through, if you are interested, what is structured and what is unstructured, as I told you, um, and the structured data needs less storage and the, un the unstructured needs more storage. That actually tells you why 80% uh, of the whole data is unstructured data. So moving to uh, the next topic. Uh, before I, I go to what is data science, what data science is, um, I need to explain, uh, I need to give you some uh, uh, introduction or some idea about uh, why uh, there people are spending too much time, effort and money on these data. The simple reason is, this is a new world and it is a world of data and data is actually, actually the money, the, the data is the cash for the company. To know that, I'll, I'll give you a small statistics if you are interested in it. WhatsApp have 1 billion active users and 2 billion minutes of voice calls every day. It is billions, 1 billion users, 2 billion minutes of voice calls every day. Look at Facebook. Facebook has 3 billion active users. What is that word? Uh, this, this is a statistic from um, uh, Facebook. In, in the last quarter of 2019, uh, for Facebook, they generated 8.5 US dollars per each user. It's, uh, we, we call it ARPU, ARP, uh, average revenue per user. That is that money they're generating. No doubt why Zuckerberg is a, a multi-billionaire. He's worth around $76 billion and um, he's just 36 years old. I don't know, you, you can compare him, uh, uh, you, can, you can actually understand how big is that. If you want a small comparison, you look at the, the Lulu Group uh, chairman, Yusuf Ali, he's around, he was in worth, worth around five to six billion. He's in the industry, he's selling commodities for the last 20, 30 years. Well, this guy is just 36 year old and he, well, what Facebook is selling? Facebook is selling data, your data, our data, and everyone's data. Look at another company, Google. Google is also a data company. They have data storage capacity, data analytical tools, data uh, with everything with the data. One of the biggest company and you need to follow him, uh, the Google very closely if you are interested in, in data uh, career. So they're, they're a trillion company. That means uh, their parent company, Alphabet, is a trillion company as well. So I'll, I'll go to all these factors that are actually contributing to a new field in data science. I, I, we didn't have a, a, a career option as data scientists 10 years ago in technical field. There are, they have that field in statistical analytics, some research area, but not in computer. Uh, uh, software industry. But if you look at now, there is a field as data scientist, data science area, a lot of data science um, uh, segments as well. So what is data science? Data science in a very simple words. The problem is the, the amount of data we are getting, which is increasing, the technology is still evolving. And there are a lot of changes happening in the, world, the technology world. So I can't give you a proper, perfect definition for data science. But the simplest and the pithiest uh, definition I've seen is data science is using those data you are, are creating or we are creating and somebody is creating to make useful. So give some insight from the data. That's the that's simplest definition. This is from uh, one of the top data scientists called the KCE. Uh, Kozilkov is uh, Google's chief data scientist. As I said earlier, Google is one of the companies you need to follow closely if you want to be a data scientist. So another way, it is a multidisciplinary field. Make use of scientific methods, processes, system to make something, uh, to make some insight out of uh, the data. So that's that's actually the data science is. Uh, I'm just moving to the next slide. One of the reasons I 
I've added, um, I, uh, I've, I've chosen data science as today's topic instead of data analytics is because I thought um, it is more useful for a lot of um, people in India, a lot of graduates and postgraduates in India. They, know, they normally have a mathematics degree or mathematics or, or statistics as a part of their career. And uh, I have seen a few of my friends, uh, they did mathematics and PG and they uh, haven't gone to a, a big career uh, instead they did something uh, uh, else in, in a professional world. So I thought I'll include, uh, 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 I'll give a bit of correlation, a bit of career option and how you can be in the data science area. So I'm going back to the uh, introduction of data science. Now, in a nutshell, you can see that from this picture, there are three different circles. And uh, one is mathematics, computer science, and domain expertise. These all together, created a new field called or, 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 or a, a power of data science or power of extracting the data. Earlier, you, you always have the mathematics and statistics um, with you for the last few decades. And we uh, evolved and matured. It is a matured area. Computer science is the same in the last few decades. It is, it is, it is in a way, it is matured, but it is maturing in a different areas now, like data science. What happened? In the last 10 years, we're getting more data. At the same time, we are, uh, the hardware cost is uh, decreasing. The storage capacity for the storage capacity or for the processing power, uh, you need to spend less money compared to earlier days. And also, there are more uh, better technologies. Earlier, we used to have uh, something called supercomputers. Um, one big computer, you create one big computer, that's a, uh, size of that may be a size of a big building or something and they ask them to uh, process a big um, mathematical or statistical formula well now you have a lot of new technologies like distributed computing like uh, hadoop is doing that uh, that's Muhammad is going to explain much more about that and uh, that actually created uh, that the marriage, you can say the marriage of uh, mathematics and the power of computer science together created a new world of machine learning, uh, data science, statistical research, uh, and, and, and AI. And along with that, you can see one more uh, small circle at the bottom, or it's not a small, it's a domain expertise. Domain is nothing but which sector, which area you're using for. If it is healthcare, it's a domain, it's the healthcare domain, or if you are using for finance or um, uh, insurance or whatever it is. So that's that's how uh, it is. So in the combination of all these together, it's actually created a new field called data science where you need to, you have billions and millions of data, you have the power of uh, computer science, computer capacity, and you have a domain or, or, or a healthcare, uh, you have a history of a, a patient, you know a lot of scenarios what can happen, you know what kind of medicine or what are the possibilities of uh, getting a new uh, uh, possibilities of a disease for him. And you can possibly predict what kind of diseases he's going to have in the future. So you're putting some instructions and some algorithm together over there to, to get a, a better understanding uh, of that patient. That's what we are using now. Going to the next one, uh, I don't want to talk a lot about uh, data science, what it is, because you can get a more information on a lot of um, uh, courses and a lot of areas, a lot of places you can refer this. I'll give you some of them at, at the end of this talk. So, what is normally, uh, what is the life cycle of a, a simple or a normal uh, data science project? So you can actually see the first one, it starts from one, two, three, and then it, it may iterate many times or it, it may go through a few of that in between. I'm, I'm, not, going, I'm not going in detail again. Um, the discovery phase is actually, you need to have a, an objective. For example, one of the project and one of the well, part of the, I worked in a small part of the project where uh, in an insurance industry, we, uh, it is called catastrophic modeling. Um, so insurance industry, we actually look at the risk factor uh, and a lot of other factors uh, to know, uh, uh, to, to put a premium on, on certain activity. For example, I'm insuring, I'm going to insure a house 
in, uh, in uh, somewhere in UK or I'm, uh, I'm doing, I want to insure a house in India or I want to insure a house in Syria. So what are the things which I need to look at? There are many things you need to look at, where it is, the country, the place, the region. Then you need to look at um, uh, uh, the value of the house and the changes, etc., and the history of um, claims. And one of the other thing is actually catastrophe. What kind of catastrophical uh, elements uh, need to be added? For example, there are two types of catastrophical elements normally comes into uh, this analysis. That is the natural calamities like the earthquakes, floods, tsunamis, etc., etc. And the other one is actually um, human-made uh, catastrophes, uh, for example, terrorism, war, etc. So based on that, we create a, a model, which a CAT model is catastrophical modeling, actually. Uh, we create a, a model uh, to give some indication about the new policies for the underwriters. So the first phase is uh, discovery. Discovery is actually uh, finding and setting the objective, what to do, what is the timeline, um, what is the budget? What is the some way you say uh, uh, what output you need at the end? Um, data preparation is one of the uh, main area which is I worked a lot in that area uh, at the same as uh, Mohammed. Uh, data preparation is nothing but getting all the data together because you get data from different sources. You get financial data from one area. You get um, uh, information uh, from each countries. Maybe you get. Uh, claims data and you get uh, people's data and credit history and etc that kind of information uh, so these different data is coming from different parts uh, different sources and you need to analyze it so that, that is actually you need to clean it uh, there is a, a process called ETLT sometimes extract transform uh, load and transform again that happens many times it's a big process because you need to get all the data together and store it as one entity uh, which need to be related together. You need to create the relationship in between because you have a house in um, somewhere in India, and you have uh, you need to look at the forensic uh, uh, effects trading uh, happening or, or the impact effect of effects trading happening in the U.S. market. So you need to uh, link those in between. Some, uh, so these are the kind of uh, minute details it goes to. The model planning is nothing but. Uh, what kind of algorithm, what kind of tools uh, we use, the, the planning that kind of things. Uh, because if you look at the statistical elements, uh, you, can, you have a lot of different algorithms and you can apply a lot of different, uh, more, uh, different uh, uh, ways to do one thing. So designing this is uh, be done, uh, will be done in this space. And the next one is actually building the model. And uh, that's the place where you're using some technologies. Um, for example, if I'm building a, a statistical model, I may be using uh, a check, uh, one of the, the language uh, called R or Python or something like that. Um, so using that, I'll build a model, um, I'll validate it, I'll test it. That may be in iteration to get a, a good uh, uh, output. Um, and again, if you are predicting uh, what's happening in, in, in CAT modeling in the next 10 years, 20 years, or 50 years, or even 100 years, um, you need to uh, model and run it, test run it, and validate it many times to get a, a near perfect um, uh, answer. So, operationalize uh, what we do is we put in a near live environment, or sorry, live like environment. Uh, to test the performance, how it performs, and what the output is coming in, and just from uh, some of the users as well. And the last one is communicate. What this is again one of the um, important thing in this area. Uh, whatever output you have, you have to have a good uh, way of communicating to the end uh, users. If um, if the executives of the company want the data, or if the researchers want the data, if the uh, underwriters looking the data doctors are looking the data you need to communicate in a, in a better form they can understand easily and they can understand faster because nobody wants to spend more time on reading a big journal and understand uh, this uh, small uh, outcome from the data so that's an important i'll go through these some of the areas which you normally use in data science in the next uh, data preparation i touched earlier this is one of the areas where you use uh, we get all the data from different sources and we, we call it as EPLT, EPL uh, data 
uh, preparation, whatever it is. So different sources produce the data and we clean it. We uh, make it in a, in a format and uh, in a related format or we can put together in the same uh, bucket or same place. Use the word bucket because uh, I think uh, Mohammed is going to explain using Amazon. Uh, so S3 is not S3 bucket or nothing but the data storage. So this is, uh, we use a lot of different tools. Um, uh, historically, Informatica, et cetera, we were using, uh, used a lot. Nowadays, there are a lot of tools that are from uh, different companies like um, Amazon and Redshift, um, uh, Google um, and uh, Microsoft, uh, their own uh, different products as well. So, so you can, the tools, you can have many tools, but the concept is the same. And you do that every time. Machine learning, again, uh, I'm not going in detail because this has been covered in the last session by Sir Abdus Salam. Uh, you know that machine learning uh, is actually, in early days, you give instructions to do something for the computer or some of the robots. So it can't actually uh, uh, react to some something which is new, uh, one of the, uh, so for example, if a, a computer, uh, sorry, a robot want uh, are in a situation uh, where it needs to react to something new. Uh, one of the examples I've, I've seen from, um, I, I've heard from uh, one of the famous historian, Yuval Harari, is um, in, in few years time, you may be having <coughs> self-driving cars in the market. And uh, if, if the car, comes into a, a scenario where a couple of uh, footballs uh, are thrown into the into the road. What the car will do? The car may ignore it and then may just crash the footballs and go because it knows from its algorithms how to what to uh, what to do on that situation because the football is not that uh, big or that is not that important. Well, at the same time, a couple of uh, two small children, so two, two kids are uh, out of the road, and it's the car is nearly hitting the uh, the, the kids. What the self driving car driving car can do? Again, if a, if you are in that position, you will look that okay. You will try to save uh, the life of the kids because uh, that's a human tendency and human side of you. But the car. It, 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 it do it depends on uh, what is being um, uh, instructed and uh, what what is the priority set on that instruction but again I, I, my, the, the reason I'm saying this is if the car has not given the exact instruction that two kids are going to jump in front of the car uh, but it has got a lot of other instructions and car can uh, derive a new uh, definition from that to react at that time. That's, that's the way uh, the, the new uh, computers and AI will be uh, processing and learning things from the examples. So again, what, uh, what the car will do over there, it depends on what it has been written. If it wants to save uh, the money, uh, the, the car, um, of the owner who he may be sitting at the back of the car and maybe sleeping at the back of the car or need to save the two kids, which is depends on uh, what is being said there. Again, the humanity side is, is it depends on what is being prioritized. But uh, the whole point is uh, the, the new world is going to learn from the examples and the data which we already have and some uh, algorithms to predict in the future for uncertainty. Again, this is a, a slide I added from my uh, the last um, session by Mr. Mahmoud Mamajiwala. Sorry, uh, Mr. Abdus Salam. So um, I'm, I'm just skipping through. One of the most important um, segment uh, which we use in data science area is uh, statistics, mathematics. Um, as I know that traditionally, most of our um, institutes in Kerala or India we learn a lot of statistics and mathematics as a part of our um, uh, plus two uh, uh, degree career, bachelor's and master's. But even if you're uh, learning, uh, if you're doing your MBA or 
if you are learning uh, doing your commerce or any other subject you learn a lot of statistics um, can you actually use it that's my question okay uh, one uh, just a question for you uh, i hope you can see my screen clearly how many uh, fish are there in the screen uh, is there any um, answers from you please uh, type on the screen uh, how many um, uh, fish you can uh, see in the screen Rubas, please update me. yeah i think the questions are coming up but looks like people are uh, engaged so okay. there are a variety of them starting from three, five, seven, four, seven, you know? Oh. Yeah, so seven, oh, seem, seven seems to be the more favorite. Six, oh. someone has said, someone has typed 10. So 10 is the, uh, okay. you know? Okay, well, I'll make it clear. How many fish you can see now, clearly? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so two. Two? Some, okay. Someone is saying three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's very good. Um, so I have got the answer there, which is a simple question. Uh, you 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 may be wondering why asking this uh, stupid question in front of you uh, because it's a it's a very simple question. Yes, uh, it is three fish you can see there in in uh, in the screen. And again, is it a data? Yes, it is a data. Uh, do you think it is a, a statistics? A statistical data? Is it, do you call this as a statistics? Anybody? Uh, just type no or yes. Uh, any answer from you? People are affirmative. Yeah, yes. There is no also coming. Okay. Yeah. More, My more question is, is, is it a statistic? People are agreeing to it. Yes, they are saying yes. Is, is, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Which is um, uh, a bit uh, uh, there, surprised. There are, um, few no, there are a few no's also. Okay. Very good. That's in minority. Very good. Okay. So, in reality, it is not statistics because what is statistic? Oh, okay, now I'll, I'll put another question. Uh, the reason I'm saying it is uh, not statistics because it is certain. You, there is a certainty in it. You can only see three um, fish on the screen and that is a fish bowl and you only have three fi uh, fishes on the screen. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase one uh, question, one more. Uh, don't worry, this may be the, my last question. Uh, how many fish you can see after one month? Any any answer? Um, it they, uh, looks like uh, no one has uh, no one is answering. They okay. want to see uh, yeah. they want to see all the, all the fishes, but yeah, someone has put zero, maybe zero? three. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, someone has started interesting prediction needs some additional information. Exactly, that's uh, and uh, that's someone has said. Answer. Yeah, it depends on variety of factors. They need a statistical projection. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's quite interesting uh, to to hear that. So there are a few things I got is prediction, statistical factors. You need more information, more more, more knowledge about that. You may need to know that okay, the, the two fish are the friends. Are they on the same type of fish? And one is a male or female? And uh, you need to know how long it takes to have babies for that. So, and, and uh, you need to know uh, how good is the uh, owner of the fish bowl is actually looking at the fish uh, bowl and changing the um, uh, uh, water and giving uh, food um, and, and the environment, etc. There are different factors and each factor you can call in statistics, we call uh, or you call variables and whether it's a dependent variable, independent variable, whatever it is, it's a variable. So my, um, answer it that if you're going to predict it that is always statistic again uh, please bear in mind this is i'm not giving you uh, a definition of statistics please refer to your um, uh, uh, lecturer or professor and your reference books if you're uh, going to put down or write down in any examples or anything Please don't blame me and uh, the definition I'm giving you for the statistics. This is the simplest definition I can give you about the statistics. Um, statistics is the science of changing your mind under uncertainty. So it's, it's my question is how many fish in the next uh, 30 years, sorry, 30 days. So um, how many? It depends on many variables and uh, it's, it's predicting under uncertainty. There are a lot of uncertainty. Maybe you change your after 20 30 days oh there is no fish 
in that. So you will change your uh, model and your prediction into a different level. So statistics is uh, used a lot uh, or, or one of the main driver or one of the catalyst in the data science field where you need to do a lot of uh, this kind of prediction uh, and you need to form something out of uncertainty or uh, you need to uh, uh, create a new um, outcome from a uh, few other outcomes that's exactly what the ai needs to uh, needs here um, and why statistics and why not statistics earlier the reason is statistics is a mature field uh, a lot of uh, algorithms, a lot of uh, formulas already created in the last um, uh, many decades. And you have uh, uh, model and formulas for um, regression analysis, clustering analysis, uh, A-B testing, etc. already. So because of the computer power, the, uh, the computing power has increased, the new technologies has uh, uh, derived or, or evolved in this uh, computing area. So uh, you can st uh, use statistical uh, formulas and statistical uh, abilities uh, with the computer science, um, then you can get a better uh, prediction and you can uh, do much more from the data, the uh, abundant, abundant amount of data we are cre uh, creating at this world. I put um, the uh, picture of the dyes <laughs> uh, on this slide because uh, I just like it. Um, the reason is when I was in, in my university classes, uh, two of the main uh, things my statistics professor or uh, lecturer used to uh, take for as an example is one is a, a rolling a die or rolling five die or rolling six dice or uh, the cards. I never played card at that time, so it was so hard for me to understand and answer those questions. But die was always easy and simple. And you can predict how many files you are going to get in six dies if you are rolling once or twice or thrice. You can get a formula, and that is exactly using in many of the AI technologies, many of the uh, data science, data analytics area as well. So this is one of the main area. One of the area we, uh, you need to have some knowledge and understanding. Uh, I'm not going anything deeper because that is not the purpose of this uh, session. I'm going to the next one. One of the so if you remember uh, the earlier slide where what is the normal life cycle? The last cycle life cycle is actually uh, visualization. What is visualization um, in, in, for you? Uh, visualization is actually if you look at this um, a picture, what you can see on the picture. So there is, uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama. I, I like I like Barack Obama's picture and his uh, his talk as well. So I thought I'll add it. Uh, again, there is no other reason I added it. No scientific reasons. Um, just I like it. Uh, so if you look at that picture, you can get a lot of information from a small picture. It's not uh, the data is not put together in in a tabular form as uh, rows and columns. You can put that way, but this is much easier. Why? Your brain is designed to capture the size, the color, and the orientation of something much faster than you are reading uh, through a table or reading through a book. That is the way our uh, brain functions. So, visualization is nothing but using those powers. Uh, you can read uh, the size of something faster. So you look at that um, photo over there. So you can easily say that, okay, Barack Obama is giving a speech or, or a talk about what? Oh, about America's economy uh, for the year 2010. And from even I don't have the numbers on the screen, you can easily say that, okay, United States, I've got almost um, the United States is economy, the economy is almost two or three times bigger than China. Why? Because you can read and understand and interpret that size factor much faster than you read through different data. So this is one of the area which I specialized in, and I need to tell that I'm, I'm, uh, and, uh, 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 my experience is more on the visualization side and uh, data discovery and data management, data uh, ETL kind of uh, sites. So 
I'm just going to uh, the next screen again. Uh, it's a, I just want to put you through a, a demo uh, of, of these visualizations. Um, can you see my screen again, Arubas? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is uh, this is a very uh, relevant topic uh, at this time. We are all uh, in, 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 in an unfortunate and unprecedented situation where we are in the middle of the COVID. Uh, is a battle. And we know this is a, a dashboard which I, I like from uh, I've, I've, I've seen I've gone through many uh, dashboards from many government organizations and look at this looks sorry very to uh, sorry to interrupt uh, Sayyad how much time you would need uh, how much more time before uh, you uh, I just need two uh, three minutes okay thank you okay. I'll, uh, by that time I'll hand over to um, okay carry on, carry on. that's fine yeah okay uh, this is one of the um, uh, dashboard which I like a lot um, from, uh, when I looked at many government organizations. Why? Because look at the orientation, uh, look at the colors, look at the size, uh, these three factors and you can easily say that okay, the top four numbers which are the crucial numbers which is uh, put together in a way that you can easily read and understand. Okay, uh, there are 2,322 confirmed cases and people, 19 people died in so far. This is the latest data as of um, yesterday. And uh, you can see the graphical analysis here. How was the trend in the last, uh, from the first case reported to now. And uh, you can see again, this is a picture. You can easily spot your district. And you can see the color differences. Uh, this color, there is a girl, uh, somebody died in this um, uh, um, district, and somebody died in this district. And you can look at the color, it's a, it's a bit more lighter color, there is no death over there. So you can easily uh, understand a lot of information from this dashboard and, and from this visualization. That is the area which is developed in the last few years as well. Why I'm, I'm giving you an example of this because this information is actually uh, generated from maybe you look at the test uh, happened here uh, 1 lakh 40 thousand in Indian terms uh, 140 thousand uh, tests happened in, in Kerala uh, I think the data is coming from that many records so they're, they're, they're analyzing this data and they're producing this um, outcome or insight from this much uh, records so you can actually uh, put together a very similar uh, or almost same dashboard, uh, even though if you have uh, 100 billion uh, records or um, if you are analyzing a few billions of uh, people as well. So behind the scene, you have billions of data, but you need to put together in a small one screen and, and then that screen needs to convey a lot of information. That's where the visualization comes into it. As well. So this is a very uh, good one. I'm just uh, moving on to the next one. I hope you, most of you will uh, like uh, football. This is one of the areas, uh, Tableau, uh, this is one of the visualization tools. There are many visualization tools in the market. And uh, this is uh, done by a Tableau. This is a, an analysis of Premier League for the last uh, uh, Premier League year. And if you look at uh, some of the uh, statistics. The, the statistics. I like the uh, some of the uh, way they put together. And uh, the, sorry, they just just uh, refresh uh, the way they put together. So this actually uh, compares a shots on targets against the shots of a pair. And you can see that Aguero is making around um, four shots in every match, and Salah is making nearly that much. And and they have uh, shots on target as well. So, um, they, these two guys, why they're creating more goals? You can easily see that, and you can you can at a small screen. If you look at a small screen, you have a lot of information. The amount of information that they, they put together on the screen is too much. You can see here. Okay, I'm just moving to the next one again. Uh, shorts inside, outside the box, and out, uh, uh, that, that's a comparison they're doing here in football. And uh, you can see that Aguero is a poacher. He is uh, creating more goals inside the uh, box. Sorry, inside the box. And there are many other uh, statistics, or uh, many other um, information like creativity, etc., um, etc. Et I don't want to spend much, much more time on this one because I just need to move on to the next one. So this is another area where you will be. Um, oh, sorry, this is another area where uh, data 
it's, it's a part of data science or data analytics where you have a career so i'm just moving to uh, another thing so what what about if you are not looking a career in data science i'm sure there are some people uh, there in this um, session they are not uh, data scientists, they are not um, any uh, computer expert or software expert, maybe medical uh, professional or they want to do a, a profession in any other uh, area. But I would always suggest uh, to, to uh, learn some of the technologies which helps you or which you definitely need it. Can I ask you a question again, uh, Lubas, please uh, update me any um, <coughs> uh, uh, answers from the uh, participants. This is a graph uh, which is created using a tool. Can you guess which tool is used for this one? Can you uh, give a, a guess? So this is a graph of America, United States of America. In each, uh, they have uh, different states in the US. And you can see that from left to right, it is just like a, a US map. And this actually uh, tells you the wild uh, uh, fires uh, contagion, uh, contagion of wildfire in, in United States of America since 2001. And from the color, you can actually uh, understand which one is more prone to wildfire or not. Uh, so, any idea? Uh, uh, Siad, it will be helpful if you can give us four choices. Because okay, okay that's, that's very good. Um, I can just give you two choices. One is a modern visualization tool like um, uh, Tableau, uh, ClickView, uh, or Power BI, or Cognos Analytics, or Lucas, etc. Or two, uh, the old, uh, we, we have something called an Excel, a Microsoft Excel, which is an old tool from Microsoft. Okay. Any? So nearly 30% of them are saying Tableau. Uh, okay. And someone has uh, said OpenStreetMap, HeatMap, oh, uh, Excel. Sorry. That Excel also, cool. yeah, my favorite tool, Excel also is there, yes. Well done, Rubas. <laughs> okay, um, I, will, I will just move on. Somebody said heat map, yes, this map is called heat map. This, 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 this uh, uh, diagram is called heat map. I'm, I'm happy that somebody is um, uh, very knowledgeable in this field. Um, again, Rubas, uh, you said somebody said that it's Excel. And Excel yes, now I think, yeah, 50% of them agrees with Excel. Okay, very good. Uh, good, uh, <laughs> good choice. Yes, uh, uh, this is this is created using uh, Excel, and uh, I. Some of you may be thinking that uh, sorry, some of uh, you are PhD holders in mathematics and statistics. Why you may be thinking why I am I'm going to Excel, but uh, historically Excel is a, a tool. Uh, it's maybe I can say a common man's data science tool, which you can uh, store data, which you can analyze data, which you can produce a different uh, kind of outcome. You can do a lot of uh, uh, transformations, etc. as well. So why I included uh, Excel in this data science topic, just to want to uh, let you know that if you are going to any field, it is always good to have a good knowledge in Excel. If you are a medic, or if you are uh, going to have a career in uh, advertising or marketing or finance, learn Excel, which will be very helpful in your career. In your professional career, Excel is one of the most um, used tool. And uh, some way I like it, some way I don't like it. Because uh, I like it because Excel is one of the best tools from Microsoft ever produced, but I think that many people think that. Uh, I don't like because many people are started using Excel for 100,000 records initially, and it started growing into millions and uh, millions of data, and it makes a lot of issues. And we will be called to uh, solve it, and that that's one of the reasons I don't like it. So there are two levels you can actually look at in Excel if you are uh, medic or anybody else. Uh, basic. Uh, understanding of Excel, basic knowledge, like sort data, etc. And you can do a lot of amazing things like this uh, using advanced data, uh, Excel features like VB and macro forwarding, etc. Siad, if you don't mind, can you please tell uh, in what was that, uh, you know, it was done in Excel, but uh, was it done in VBA or some of the macros? 
Um, I haven't actually looked at, uh, but I can easily tell you that it, it's uh, they just plotted together each cell, I think, and uh, maybe used a VBA uh, macros as well. Because uh, one of the, that's a good question. Um, one of my earlier company, uh, we have a, a macro uh, expert in that company. He he was um, paid a big money. I can tell you around forty thousand Indian rupees every day to create something uh, like this on Excel. He is just an expert, Excel expert, giving this kind of analysis. Uh, forty thousand Indian rupees per day. Uh, he he. Uh, uh, that, that's few years ago. It's changing now. People are, are using other new sophisticated tools now for that. But still, Excel is very much used, and, and the capability of Excel is. Too much. Thanks, Yad. Uh, just modeling, uh, going to the. Okay, if anybody interested, this is. Uh, uh, I just uh, gone through, uh, just touching through uh, the catch modeling earlier. Uh, but what I need to do is uh, uh, this is uh, one of the catch models created using IBM technologies. What are the different um, uh, variables, uh, just like location, vulnerability, building claims, policy, premium. Uh, Etc. to create the catastrophic model, and uh, the, this is a, a small uh, architectural uh, diagram as well. Um, what I need to do because of the time constraints, I'm not going uh, these in details. Uh, so uh, this is just for your reference, and I want to um, uh, move over to uh, uh, Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed, uh, I'm, I'm uh, handing over this to our Milton Kid Studio. Uh, Mohammed is waiting there. Uh, Mohammed, can you please take over? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just, yeah, I'll, just I'll share my screen. I stop my sharing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, Mohammed. Yeah. So thank you, Siyath, for a quick introduction. And I would like to say thank you to everyone for joining today's tech call. Also, I would like to say thank you to organizer for giving me opportunity to talk today about big data and how big data is being used in IoT. So due to time constraint, let's see how uh, I can give the demo and uh, we can go one by one. Yeah. So let's me go next one. Yeah. So let's start with like uh, Siad has already touched base uh, most of the points like uh, big data, data science, data analytics. So let me start with big data. Uh, so big data is the data, right? So now everyone knows like uh, day to day, uh, we are getting more and more data. So historically, we, we, we have like uh, data, but uh, now because of the big data, there's no way we can process big data using the traditional uh, processing system. We need to think out now out of box because I can give one example, like uh, say Facebook. Facebook is generating a daily more than 100 terabyte data per day. Twitter, 400 million uh, tweets per day. So if you can imagine like uh, day to day, data is growing, it's not going to reduce. As she has mentioned is one of the slide. Uh, if you think about 10 years back, uh, the data volume size was say 10%. Uh, within like five years, it's gone like 50%. And uh, the data is going to stay here. Data is going to stay. Data is not going anywhere, yeah. So what has changed like uh, if you think about uh, previously we used to process the data because the uh, data volume was very low, uh, the data variety was very simple. Now because now when the human is not generating the data, now machine also generating the data. So we need to think out of box. So how that is handled right now? Now if you think about in the historical like we have one big server, we're loading the data, we're processing data it was going in the sequentially. Now, if in like now all this big data term, how now we got a cloud technology and the concept of like a distributed system, like uh, we got one master node, we got multiple node, we can divide one data task into the small chunk. And at the end, you can just combine all the results and you can, you can quickly, you can process data now because of these tools and technology. I won't be going in more depth in the technology. Like there are so many technologies available in the big data, but uh, I'm happy to just, you can just put your question in the chat and then we can just, uh, we can give the answer on that, yeah. So next thing like big data, uh, just to give like uh, big data is based on the five main concept. So volume, already I mentioned Facebook, Twitter, we're getting YouTube, like 
take the example for YouTube, like every one minute, 48 hours of the data people are uploading. Just imagine right now, uh, today, what data set we got it now, what is going to happen in the future? Technology will going to change, but remember one thing like the concept will remain same, how we process data, how we collect data, how we visualize data, technology will remain same, but we need to think about out of box, like how we're going to process data. That's the reason these five concepts are very, very important for the big data. Second one uh, is the velocity, like, uh, okay, you got the big data. As for my example, like uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, we got data now. How quickly we can process data? That is very, very important. Like some people want to see in the real time. Some want to see next day. So important thing like data is important, but only collection is not important. Like how we can process, how we can transform the data very quickly. That is very, very important. So that's the reason this is the characteristics. The third point, like if you think about the variety, like uh, as already see, I just covered this structure. We got the structured data, semi-structured data, unstructured data. But I can give one quick example, like structured data is like your CSV data, your personal data, which can be easily readable. Semi-structured data is like log files, uh, which can be readable, sometimes not readable as well, because you don't know, like format is not same. Unstructured data, which is like very difficult to process, like images, your X-ray, the lots of stuff is there. So we are getting now on the machine, machine uh, generated data as well. So we got massive, massive data set. Yeah, so we need to process. The next one is the veracity, like how accurate is data? So it's only collection is not important. Like we need to check whether the data is accurate because based on that data, we are going to create uh, data insights. What is the value we're going to get it from the data? So that's the reason I'm saying big data is very important, but you should know how to claim the, your insight. If you don't know the claim, storing the data is not very, very important. So there are lots of challenges uh, we are getting, like uh, when, you, when you talk about uh, big data, so challenges like, oh, how we're going to store the data, how we're going to transform the data, how we are going to analyze data, it's not easy. We need to think about different tools and technology, how we're going to data security, if you want, if you want to go to share the data, personal data, so there's this big data topic is washed like, yeah, but we need to think about out of box, how quickly we can get this information and uh, what are the tools and technology we can use. Obviously like we can explain in more depth technologies like simple example, like in the historically, we wish, wish to have simple ETL tool, say uh, Informatica, Pentao. Now we change the approach, how we process data. We got like distributed system. We got the cloud technology. We got a uh, say a Spark technology. If you think, think about Hadoop, everything was going running in the batch. It was slow. Now, but now we need because of the volume of data, we need to think about like how we quickly we want to produce the data. So technology we got it like Spark. Uh, the Spark can be written in the Spark can be write. We can write the code in the Python. We can write the code in the Java, Scala, different technology. So they got there. We got a different frameworks, which I can go in more detail in, in my next slide. Yeah. So the purpose of this, like what I was thinking, how we can use big data. If big data, as, as mentioned, big data is washed. So I want to just explain like how the big data is being used IoT. So let me give like very quick overview of the internet of things. So in today's world, now obviously like we are, everything is connected now. We if you think about historically, we are talking about the internet of the people, people were generating the data. Now, today we talk about, oh, internet of things. When I say internet of things, we are talking about smartphones. Now we got the smart homes, smart car. They generated data on the billions of billions record on a daily basis. So we need to think about how this IoT is connected. How, what exactly is use of the IoT and how, and what is the use of the big data in the IoT? So I'm going to show today possibly one uh, use case, how exactly we use the big data in the IoT. So if you think about this diagram here, this is smart home. All my devices are connected, it connected to the IoT platform. And these all devices are connected over the network. They talk to each other. So if you think about this internet of the things, it's always about the network, devices and data whether it's machine-generated data, whether it's personal data, 
sensor data. So I can show you uh, quickly a uh, few in my next slide. What are the devices? When I talk about devices, how they talk. So these all devices centrally connected to IoT platform. They know what message is coming from the specific device. They know like what exactly needs to be do, what action we need to perform. Yeah. So this now, uh, I would say to you even possibly like the internet, internet of the things is very, very important. And, and that is going to stay. Big data is, I'm sure, big data is going to stay, but internet of things is growing. I've seen this last four or five years is massively like, we got a billions of the events, of billions of devices connected on the internet of things. So this is a big thing is coming up. Yeah, so if you think about like, uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, there are so many things in IoT. I, as mentioned, uh, uh, smartphones, smart cars, smart home, uh, some sensor, medical information. So just, just give the quick one as a real, a real like use case. I'm going to show you like some devices. Like if you see in this diagram, uh, you can see a heating system. We got some lights, some motion sensor, some plug, high hub. Each device is got their own purpose, like what, when we can use. If you think about this high hub, I can show you uh, on my, this one, if, if you can see this, uh, yeah. Can you see a plug? Uh, yeah. So you can see in the plug on my video, uh, like, uh, this is purple purpose, purpose. So like if you are just if you're just doing uh, charging your mobile in the night you don't want to keep your charging mobile full night you can put uh, some action you want to say like oh can you just after two hours switch off my this plug in previous day like we need to do manually we'll have to get up in the morning like three o'clock or switch off the light now you don't need to do it just do the action just do the perform the action you can do it other things like you can mention like sensor if you can push this sensor into the, your door somebody's coming you can figure out oh somebody's moving somebody's coming to your house somebody's moving something's happening some some action is happening same thing for like your light bulb you can control heating and if you think about like uh, in the down, down picture i have shown this alexa through alexa you can control uh, your home so everything is integrated as mentioned in my previous slide all devices are connected to each other Everything is connected. Only thing like you can control your devices, your home from anywhere in the world. Yeah. So I'm going to show the next slide. Uh, just I want, before going to the next slide, I'm going to connect. I'm going to stop the sharing. I'm connecting my mobile and I'll show you how exactly this IoT send the message to uh, in the IoT platform and then what exactly we do, how exactly it comes to the big data, how we process and what, ex what exactly value we get it from there. Yeah. So I will share, I'll stop this one and I will share it from my mobile. Yeah. yeah. Can you see my screen, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So let's go. This is a high app. So if you think about, uh, so let me go back quickly. So all the devices, if you see from the screen, all my devices, like uh, all the lights, and I got like some motion sensor. So you can think like, I just, I saw this, my motion sensor here, yeah. So it was last detected at 1051. So you can see how quickly it is sending to the IoT platform. So as mentioned to you, like <clears throat> I can switch off, switch on my lights. So if you think about this study room, let me show in my video, you can just have a uh, study room as well. So. I can just click on this one and I can switch on the light. I think you can see in my study room, so light has been switched off. So you can see, you can control your devices from the mobile, you can control from devices from the website. You don't need to be physically in at home. In fact, if you think about another important stuff, I can show you one quick, nice one to you. So if you see my heating system right now, 20, my home temperature is 18, yeah, which are set up right now. So. Suppose example, like if you're traveling from different country, you, and you want to, you, you, and you are at the airport and, be, and now you got one hour to reach at your home and you want to warm house. What you can do, strictly you can just change the temperature. By the time you reach at your home, your home is warm. So you don't need to be physically available. So how useful it is this one. So all my devices are connected uh, from here. So I'll stop this one and then I'll show you now. So whenever I'm clicking here, each event, like everything is connected to IoT platform. It is creating the event for us. Now you will be wondering like, what exactly we're doing these events? What exactly, what is the use of like, yeah. 
for the big data for the company they use this data and also it is useful for the customer like oh once you capture these events you capture like what exactly you are doing from app what exactly you are doing for the system so i will explain in my next slide so i will stop this one and i will share my again screen one moment Yeah, so I'll share my screen from here again. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so now you're seeing how exactly I use this uh, app. As I mentioned to you, you can use this app from anywhere, like from the, your website, from the, your mobile app, iOS, different things are connected to each other. So if you think about next one, uh, I think, uh, this is the architecture how we use big data in iot platform so as mentioned to you this one here whenever i click from the app or from the website there are events are created all these events are generated on the platform and then we capture so i mentioned to you like how this big data works end to end so ci has mentioned Obviously, like whenever we want, we want the data. We first the collect the data. We perform some action. It generate the data. Whether it's person data, it is a machine generated data. So in this example for the IoT, the data is generated from this IoT platform that is going to platform data. So if you think about this left side, I got different data sources. So when I generated data from IoT, we got like some app data because you are doing something on the your mobile app you're doing something on the web app then you're calling the operation guys creating your account you're creating your 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 you're the new customer so if you think about i'm collecting all the information here so your web data for the security reason just i mentioned third party data i don't want uh, the part some partner data uh, we got the payment system so everything is linked together now as mentioned to you uh, this IoT platform, what I am doing here, like uh, this, this technology can be implemented anywhere. Like uh, we got like different cloud, cloud is available. We got AWS, Azure, GCP, but I can just quickly, I can show this how end-to-end -end architecture work in the AWS, but technology can be changed at any time, but concept will remain same. The collection data, how we transform the data, what are the business logic we can apply, and then we can hand over to the data a science team what exactly they do it with this data what value what business value they produce from this data yeah so if you think about like when i click on this iot platform through my mobile app uh, just i switch off and switch on also i've shown the sensor how the data were created so that is using going through the iot platform in the cloud and we capture we we collect that data using this etl so already ci has mentioned etl extract transform load uh, you can use many technology like whether i use the pentawire whether I spy spark scala depending on your requirement uh, this tool technology can be changed yeah so once i collect the data and now as mentioned by ci as well like uh, this is a bucket like we need to store the data so as mentioned like see collection is in one part like but if you don't know how to claim the value of the data there's no, no use so when when we talk about big data always we talk about collection speed and transformation and then how exactly we're going to do store the data and how it is easy easily available to the, our end users or data scientists data analysts so that they can do the machine learning stuff on this data and also uh, do the, this uh, visualization like to get the insight from the data so my one example uh, like whenever we do like obviously once we collect the data from the iot platform uh, from iot platform we store the data on the bucket so in amazon we say s3 so, uh, like simple uh, simple storage service so everything is amazon like is services i'm not going to go in more detail what are the services they provide but as the big data things like how we use that data we should know what are services important concept will remain same like you need the storage you need the processing power so as volume volume of data is huge and huge and uh, we want to see the real-time streaming data you want to see immediately like oh 
once you got the data you want to see like what are the what are the devices online what are the devices are offline yeah you want to see your customer base you want to see oh how many devices a uh, uh, specific person got it like oh which devices is popular okay how the devices they are using it how it is coming to us everything is coming all this information is coming for the data is coming for the big data this iot platform generated generated by the machine generated data the data sometime data is wrong so that's the reason uh, i mentioned in my big data concept your data accuracy is very very important how exactly data you process is very important yeah so think about like once data is landed to s3 bucket uh, then we process to the transformation and then then that data can data can go into the data warehouse whether you want to send data lake so tools and technology can be anything different how easily once data is available transform the data science is very very important part as he had mentioned is very very important like because we need to get something from data we need we need to show what is the value for the company what is the value for customer so in my ex one next example i'm going to show oh once you process that data what exactly is coming up just one one use case yeah so from here as per this architecture diagram you can see people end user can access the data and, and same data can be accessed from the multiple uh, visualization tools whether it can power bi quick sight or amazon quick sight or people can access data directly from data lake they can see what is coming so this is very 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 important but i suggest by like like what i can do like uh, you can put your question in the chat what tools and technology is important i just try to mention here what are the important stuff is running right now in the world like we emr uh, spark uh, this is like very hot topics right now how we process real time streaming uh, the kinesis kafka there are lots of technology like there is no like uh, if i just start uh, just uh, saying the name itself it is going to take long long time uh, and I, i'm sure like all this information are available on internet but this is very very high level like so just in quick let me go tell me again like so whenever i click from do any any events from mobile it goes to the iot platform from iot platform it go to the my system from system i collect the data i process to the aws cloud or any other cloud then it keeps the whatever data is minimum required for the data analysis or aggregate data uh, then data engineer or data analyst uh, they look for the data they they, they do their machine learning part using the tools different tools and technologies r python spy spark yeah and then they create the model or algorithm which you can see from your power bi quick sight or different different tools and technology yeah so now you are seeing the use case how exactly iot being used as a big data like so if you think about like historically is impossible impossible to process this data in the traditional systems and because of the tools and technology you all in last decade we got massive massive things we can do it now because we are thinking out of box we got massive hardware right now massive cloud uh, infrastructure so it's very very easy to process data but as mentioned earlier like it's a big challenges like uh, so how how you capture data what is the format transformation this is you need to think about end to end process and then once this is completely available this is very very easy for data science and data analyst uh, to take the data into the next level so as mentioned to you information collection is very very important but value data value only like once you know how to claim it and when when i say claim it you should know what to get it from the data which she has mentioned using the algorithm machine learning so next part next slide let let me show you so if you think about the data came here and then data science team uh, they have done the, all the transformation and also machine learning algorithm and then i am getting this one email okay oh how i am using the my heating so it looks like oh the average daily high temperature i am using like 22 degree so for the customer perspective oh, that means i am using the heating massively think about like it is also comparing uh, if you see it down it is comparing the low next to your homes like near home they are using the less 0.2% that means i am using the more so using using looking into this email itself i can see yes i think i should reduce my heating or this is how iot is useful same thing for the sensor data another example i can give the netflix example netflix so netflix like obviously you watch the movies on the netflix at home 
there are more than 100 million uh, customers on the Netflix. Uh, you watch the movies, how they know which content they need to put it because they collect the data from the Netflix, whatever, whatever you view, the, whatever you watch the movies, they collect the data. And from, from there, they can figure out easily like, oh, this, this number of the customers or this particular segment, they like this specific movie. So this is how the big data in the IoT, whether it's IoT or any say medical field or, so in short, I want to say the data or big data is going to stay. And also obviously IoT is very, very important. Everything is connected and this is not going anywhere. And as per the CS slide, if you think about next 10 years, right now we got say 100 million users, suppose say Netflix, they possibly, after like uh, next five years, we'll be getting like 200 million, 300 million. So data is not going to go down. Always data is going to remain same there. So that is what I want to show, but there are different use cases as well. Like I just have given only one, this high temperature, but also you can figure out like, what are the like most popular devices? Oh, what are the main purpose they are using? What time they are coming? When they are coming online, offline, whether once you purchase the, your device, whether you are using it or whether, whether you're not using it, so everything is connected with this beta and this is how we know because of the data. If there's no data, if, if there's no data generated by these devices or the human, there is no way we can figure out what exactly they want, what exactly what's their behavior. So another example I've given in my slide here. So only the data. So simple example, like how you use your app. What are the, what are the things you use in the app? Whether you use the, whether you connect through the web application, whether you connect to the mobile application, there are so many things. There are like system wise, you can connect. Everything is interconnected. That's how I said like this IoT, all the devices, they talk on the network, all the connected each other. And there are different use cases. So I try to just mention one use case, and but there are many, many use cases, uh, which is very good for the company as well, also for the end customers. So everything is a link. In short, it, the data, to the data science or data analyst, everything's a link. Uh, this is depending on you guys, like how you implement and how you get the value uh, from the data. That is what I want to show today. I think, I think that's it from my side. Uh, but uh, as mentioned, like uh, if you have any question, anything you can put in chat and uh, we'll try to, we'll try our best to answer. And I will hand over to the Siad and uh, he will take care of the next part. Okay, so thank you very much everyone and thanks for listening to me. Uh, I know it's very short, but like due to the time constraint, I have to just uh, make it very quickly. Uh, but uh, any question, uh, just put in the chat. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mohammed. Um, it was uh, very good. Uh, very good insight to what you said. Uh, to everyone, Mohammed is a lead architect for that uh, project and he put together all those uh, almost himself with help of obviously with the help of the team. So I'm moving to my uh, the next segment and this is the last segment and hopefully uh, this is I think which I can give more value to you if it is possible. So the, this segment is uh, the career, career options uh, in data science and uh, data analytics. So going to the first, um, first uh, slide, as I mentioned earlier, um, there was uh, there was no role as data scientist in computer area maybe ten years ago. Uh, we we never heard of uh, that. ten years ago. It was like software engineer, software, uh, senior software engineer, lead engineer, etc., and architect, etc. But nowadays, more and more uh, roles are coming in the market and prefix with a data data analyst data specialist, data visualization specialist, data scientist, data engineer, etc. So what is actually uh, that means? If you look at uh, the, uh, the screen on the right side, you can see a small picture. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, you can see the columns uh, that has rows and on the left side, you can see a few rows, which are the capabilities or which are the areas um, which uh, will be, uh, which you need to work on, which will be used in the data science, data analytics uh, industry. So if you, again, uh, the roles, the name of the designation, the, the, the work you are going to do in a company mainly depend on uh, uh, three things. 
if it is a small company or if it is a medium company or if it is a large company if you are under a small company you uh, you will be called as data scientist you will be doing all the programming you may be loading the data you may be doing the statistics and you may be presenting it as well uh, maybe you have only one or two person maybe you take uh, the statistical side and programming and presentation maybe you have one more engineer maybe a data engineer he look after the data collect the data and uh, uh, do a bit of uh, cleaning and uh, cleansing on the data and getting into a better shape that's a small company but what about medium then you medium companies may have a bit more budget so they have a, they have a, a data engineer or a software engineer to load the data maybe they have a data scientist uh, to look after the scientific and um, uh, predictive analytics and uh, etc and they may have a visualization expert in another side uh, for a large company you may have a lot of uh, normally large companies have more uh, budget more power they can have more uh, more, more people into the uh, into the board uh, to do all these things so they will divide this into uh, i have already only added four uh, roles over there they, they will div uh, divide these roles again uh, uh, like uh, uh, the first one may be a data engineer uh, it is software engineer they look after uh, the data you are getting how to get the data maybe software engineer may be looking at the data engineer will be or ETL engineer ETL developer may be looking uh, to cleanse and uh, uh, to do all the transform and load activities then at the next level you can actually uh, have uh, uh, you can see here you can have a statistician or a machine learning expert these all these all may be a different post a statistical um, a research analyst some, sometimes a data research analyst a machine learning expert uh, they call machine learning expert um, data wrangling again you have a different position once you get that uh, uh, data loaded into uh, an ELT system, so ETL system, and then uh, you can you can see here uh, the data visualization expert is the last one coming into this uh, deck. If you look at and again, you, know, the big, you can see here uh, the, how important, uh, how not important it is. Looking at the bubbles here and the color of the bubble again, this is a, a, a power of visualization. How you can um, uh, show this clearly with a small uh, picture. So. Uh, if you know statistics, uh, you can be a machine learning engineer or, or a, a data scientist. You can see some of the areas you just need to know statistics and one or two um, tools, one or two software uh, programming languages. I'm going to that a bit more in detail. So, what are the three things or four things uh, which you need um, to be uh, to have a career in data science? If you remember, one of the uh, picture I have shared earlier uh, on this right side uh, the mathematics uh, here mathematics and statistics and computer science and domain expert there are the three elements you can you can keep in your mind uh, using that you can actually shape your career in data area it depends on you don't need to have all these together but some areas you need to have one or, or two together or if you know three together it's brilliant but most of the cases when you go to a large company uh, you have a specialized area where you just need to have a small piece of one thing but we need to go in, uh, very well so mathematics and uh, the first segment the first uh, 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 you can see that first circle it is mathematics and statistics you know uh, if you are a degree student or PG student, algebra, statistics, uh, analysis, uh, probability, etc. That's that's one core element. If you want to be a data research engineer, data engineer, or, or research scientist. So the programming skill again, you need to. If you are on that, so I'm just pointing out uh, uh, just for a fact. I, I said earlier. If you are a mathematical uh, student, a mathematics graduate or postgraduate in mathematics, try to learn Python or R, which helps you to get a job in data science market. Because Python and R uses the power of um, mathematics and statistics to uh, produce a, a predictive analytics or a better reports from the 
clean amounts of data which we store in, in, in some of the system or any of the system. And another important uh, uh, skill which I tell you that is uh, SQL. Again, uh, whatever you are learning, uh, if you want to get into one of these careers, please go and learn a bit of uh, understanding, uh, a bit of SQL and uh, have a, a bit of understanding on that. And, and uh, there are different tools. I'm not saying about the tools. There are different tools in the market you can uh, follow from different companies. Um, and again, there are a few other things you can go through visualization tools I mentioned earlier. There are robotic and uh, machine learning areas which you can look at the, uh, if you want to be a machine learning expert, there is one uh, designation on a, a, a role as machine learning expert or uh, 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 AI expert. You can look at that. So these are the, you can see a lot of programming tools in the market. Go and look at that. If you have questions, you can ask them later. And that's another area. So I'm just touching area. So if you have mathematics, statistics, and Python and R, you're good to go as a research scientist. And the next one is the domain knowledge. Uh, so if you're working in a healthcare or you're, you, you have a special interest in mathematics and uh, statistics you can learn this at a bit of python you can be a healthcare analyst what is healthcare analyst there are a lot of jobs coming into market like finance analyst healthcare analyst insurance analyst retail analyst a marketing analyst what they need to have they need to have the problem solving skills and to use one of these tools uh, maybe visualization tools if you know r and python that kind of thing is very good as well so these are all the three uh, things which we mentioned here, mathematics, computer science, domain knowledge. So, so you don't need to have everything together, but if you have two, it's good. If you have three, it's very good, but learn uh, a bit deeper, whatever you do. Uh, again, this is one of the, uh, 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 the last thing, soft skill. This is very close to my heart uh, because when I was in my uh, uh, graduation and post graduation, nobody told me, or oh, we didn't realize it, the soft skill is that important in your professional career. Uh, but I learned from my experience, and I know that now soft skill is one of the most important aspect of any career you're going to. It doesn't matter whether you're a data scientist or a doctor or whatever it is, you need to have a curiosity and creativity, you need to be a problem solver, and on top of that, you need to have a very, very good communication skill. The communication skill like uh, speaking, presenting, writing documents. If you have a spare time, write some document and publish somewhere. Uh, look for that kind of activities which helps you a lot uh, to get a good career and it helps you your career if you're already there as well. Uh, and obviously, you may ask these questions. Uh, I thought uh, where you can learn, which is the best place to start with. Uh, obviously. It depends on which area you need to go. Uh, if you want to go, uh, if you are a mathematician, if you want to learn uh, R and Python, I will. Uh, I would say that there are a lot of education platforms nowadays. There are many, many like Udemy, Coursera, edX, LinkedIn, Linux Academy, Udacity, etc., etc. They are very good. There are very good courses. Uh, look the reviews. Look at that. Some of them are very free. Some of them are just um, a few. Uh, dollars maybe uh, the money somebody spent for a uh, lunch ten dollar or something uh, ten dollar fifteen dollar you get a lot of good courses in these platforms another one I just noticed last week well, when I was referring to this one uh, if you're in India there is something called uh, NP tell uh, that's a the central government initiative uh, it is also called Swayam. Uh, what does uh, what is that it's actually uh, central government it's I think funding for a lot of in the uh, IIT, IAC professors uh, to create their own courses and to do the course, which is absolutely free. And this has been taught by I, uh, IIC and IIT professors. So you can look at this site and you can uh, join that. And if you want a certificate, they will give you a certificate. You need to do uh, pay uh, uh, 1000 uh, uh, rupees. So I thought it is good if you just want to have a feeling of uh, a board and they, I, I look like a couple of them, they have a, a board and they're writing to the board and teaching that way. Uh, and the proper, they, they are good uh, top professors in, uh, in India. And the next one is obviously, if, I, if you want to be a machine learning expert, an AI expert, 
this is the uh, page which I look at, the next one, IBM, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, etc. These are the top four companies which uh, are in this industry, in the data industry, um, and they have their own courses, they have their own certifications, you can do the certification, they have their own best practices, uh, white papers, use cases, these are very important if you as a career here you can read and you can learn and you can certi get certified before you come out of uh, your um, uh, education um, like graduation or post graduation which helps you a lot to get into the market today's market is very competitive and if you already know these things the companies will be happy to get you on board easily uh, other than somebody don't have this experience and the last one is actually universities i, I, I did some research and i've seen that um, uh, traditionally indian universities uh, normally most of the university have maths and uh, uh, mathematics and the statistics and courses nowadays i can see uh, data science courses data analyst courses from the top company top institution like iit isc uh, ibm uh, sorry iam etc so uh, and, and many other uh, universities as well i haven't uh, had a look at uh, in kerala universities like calicut or kerala uh, uh, maybe uh, cg is the best place they can you can uh, get a help from so and also if you are interested in uh, outside of uh, india uh, there are many universities in the uk uh, cambridge uh, and oxford universities and imperial college have some uh, 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 data science courses ai courses uh, uh, the uh, other uh, part of the world as well you can see many uh, universities and courses so here i mentioned a couple of uh, cloud.google.com certification data engineering this is one of very one of the uh, top i say one of the very good course if you want to be a data engineer or data scientist machine AI learning google is one of the leading one in that segment uh, along with ibm amazon and microsoft these are different providers the theory and the process will be very similar but using different tools so you follow one of these and that will be very good for your career if you are looking for uh, to have a career in this area so this is one of the things I added, uh, career in UK, in case you ask me that. Um, there is a point-based system in, uh, here in UK for any technical uh, roles. Um, for, I would say it is nearly impossible nowadays. It was very easy earlier, 10 years ago. You need to get 70 points in a, a point-based calculator, but it's very, very hard now, nearly impossible. They change the rules. But uh, John Claus, uh, your aspiration and don't close your uh, doors uh, because Brexit happens uh, last year. Uh, uh, UK closed the doors for many European countries to come here. Maybe that will open uh, some doors for you in the future. So this I have added a link here. This is uh, if you want to calculate your score um, for the eligibility of getting in the UK. Uh, that is the place. So. This is about uh, my talk. Uh, I'm, I'm very thankful to you all uh, be here and uh, listening to the uh, talk. And I hope, as I said earlier, uh, my aim is not to teach you data science. My aim only to guide you in the right path or where you can go and learn something, something in data analytics, data science. So thank you very much. I'm handing over to uh, Siddhika and Rubas and Namshit, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Siad and Mohammed, for a very uh, enlightening and detailed talk. I mean, I didn't know much about uh, uh, big data. Still, I don't think much, but uh, I can understand the uh, where the uh, big data plays in the uh, current uh, IT and probably for the uh, possible future. I think it looks like that is the backbone. Now, uh, most of uh, you in the audience are maybe in the beginning of your career and it's maybe uh, exciting for you. So please do, uh, you know, if you think that this is your area, please do go along with it. Don't be uh, stopped by any of the uh, negative factors, whether, you know, you don't have the money, I don't have the connection, I don't have just what you have. <laughs> please do, uh, you know, uh, go ahead. I'm sure, you know, you will reach, uh, where you would like to be. Now, uh, this is the end of the first session. I'll just uh, hand over to Dr. Riaz to do the uh, next session. Dr. Riaz is the uh, main architect of all these uh, programs. He's a, he's a uh, medical consultant, but I'm not sure anymore because I see him everywhere. 
but probably very little on the medicine front. Uh, uh, now, um, I, I think I yet to see somebody with the amount of uh, energy and passion and commitment to you know help uh, people and uh, fellow human beings like uh, Riaz and may God uh, bless him. So I just, without much of uh, taking a lot of time, I just hand over to uh, Riaz to proceed with the next session. Riaz? Yeah, thank you, uh, Siddhika. As we affectionately call him, I think uh, that is quite a generous uh, introduction. I think a lot of people are uh, doing a lot more than me. But I hope uh, all of you have enjoyed thoroughly this, uh, this session. And I think I got to admit myself, um, being a doc medical doctor, I didn't know much about data apart from that. Uh, you know, in the hospitals, we asked our statisticians to, uh, or, or our data analysts to do the data for us. And, uh, you know, we played onto the graphs, um, you know, what they have done. So, uh, you know, it's been fascinating to see insights into how this data is being produced, how it's generated and what are the applications. As we all know, and we agree, you know, from this, uh, you know, fascinating talk, both from Siad and, and uh, Mohammed, um, that data, we live in the current world of data. We know the uh, the politicians in the world use the data. I don't know if it's called as data crunching, data wrangling, whatever. The COVID times, it's all about data, and we rely our life if it's revolving on that. Our healthcare is on data, um, and we can't underestimate the importance of this important uh, uh, the, the importance of this of this of the subject. <coughs> and, uh, one of the ideas was to see what is actually happening in the world. We last week we you know last session was about machine learning, and now we're talking about data. And when we bring all, to, all, all of this together, especially for an audience like yourself, who is just actually coming to the world um, in, in your career, as majority of you, it, it makes a big, big difference. So let's talk about the various questions that we have. I think um, we, like I said, we're going to do this question and answer session in, 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 in three sessions. Um, so um, first of all, we're just going to introduce our panelists. So I know we've run, off uh, run over time a bit, uh, maybe about 20 Sorry minutes for that. over time. Uh, so, you know, we probably will try to compress the session. Um, I can see a few uh, people dropped out maybe because of the time. Um, but there have been excellent questions throughout, and some of the questions have been answered on the chat window itself. So we'll start off the session uh, uh, by, by introducing our panelists, a few more panelists we have. And then um, we can uh, go ahead um, and, and uh, you know, answer some of your questions. And then some of your raised hands, that will be done at the very end. Um, now, let me uh, introduce our moderators. Um, we have two excellent moderators here to do the Q&A session. Uh, one is Rubas. Um, you probably must have briefly uh, heard him. Um, he is the live wire behind whatever we're doing, all the sort of work that's happening, the background work has been done by him, all the posters and all the sort of, uh, you know, communicating with the CG team. He's a civil engineer by profession. I think he's got a lot more skills than civil engineering. Um, so Rubas is one of our, and he's an IIT graduate, by the way, so this is cream. Um, uh, cream uh, of our society here, uh, and we have also Namshid. Namshid is a is a is a is a senior software engineer. He's into software testing, and then he's um, he's been diligently uh, working behind the scenes, answering most of your questions uh, on the chat window. Uh, so, without further ado, we got a couple of these experienced uh, people to do the moderation for you. So, over to you guys, and without further ado, let's 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 crack on. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Doctor Riaz. So basically, one of the data, like you know, I was skimming through the, ski, uh, the speakers and the panelists, and one of the data actually I have interestingly found is that uh, almost all of them are very good badminton players. And you know, out of them, and everyone will agree that Babusha Abdul Rahman is one of the best badminton player, best, uh, one of the best Indian badminton player in UK also. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. basically, <laughs> uh, so. I don't disagree that. <laughs> <laughs> so Babusha, when he is not playing badminton, he is a data architect and a strategist. He has got 12 years of experience in data engineering and analytics, and he has got a wide range of banking and commodity trading sector experience. So Babusha, back to my uh, you know fact finding. So you know, is badminton anywhere related to you know data science? Do you have to be very good in badminton to get to data engineering? Or my question is, uh, as a fresher what should you do or what you would do to get hired in a data engineering field? All right, okay. Um, uh, I think uh, Siad already covered a lot of this, but I can just uh, summarize a little bit. Basically, uh, the first thing what you want to do 
you, you decide what you like to do. Basically, Siat uh, clearly explained the, you know, the different streams we have, data engineering, data science, and machine learning. So decide uh, you know, which stream you want to go. Basically, I work as a data engineer. So I don't, um, you know, I don't know anything about maths or statistics. So if you like maths, then um, you, know, you might go for, you might choose data science. So the first thing you need to decide what you like to do. Once you decide that, um, then um, the next thing as a fresher, you try to uh, get an internship or a initial uh, you know, uh, entry level job. Uh, then you can start from there, then you get certified. In case you have not managed to get your first job, then um, consider getting a certification on the field you have selected. Um, you can do certification from uh, like Google, Microsoft or Amazon. Um, so when you have certification, it's a kind of a proof that uh, you know the subject and you have got the skills. Um, so when you when you go to uh, when you go for an interview that's the first thing as a proof that you have learned the skills otherwise uh, you know without a certification it is very difficult for you to prove to uh, an interviewer or a client what skills you got so i highly recommend to have a certification um, so that will really help the other recommendation would be be active in linkedin uh, try to create a lot of professional connections, um, then read articles related to your subject, write articles, be, be very much uh, you know, uh, involved in the discussions. So uh, through LinkedIn, you would be, you know, you'll be top of your subject basically. Um, then uh, get a, a GitHub account, uh, do project, maybe you get sample projects from GitHub, you can get a lot of codes from GitHub, um, then other things like, uh, yeah, uh, as someone mentioned in the chat, uh, try to, once you learn the subjects, uh, try to get, the, get into cloud, cloud technologies, get free uh, subscription, you can try it yourself, all the tools. Yeah. So, that's, you know, the courses you were saying advice. is more like Udemy or Coursera, is that the certifications you, like we need? Uh, no, basically you can, you can get, cert if, if I'm, uh, you know, for a data engineering, you will have courses from, um, you know, Google, Google um, certification you can do, or maybe Azure certification uh, from uh, Microsoft. So this will help you. But to prepare for the certification, you can do courses from Udemy or maybe um, um, Pluralsight. Um, they provide free uh, certificate. You know, certificate. So you can can do uh, courses, free courses from uh, Pluralsight for Microsoft uh, certifications. Thank you, Babushan. Uh, can I hand it over to Namshit? Namshit, can you please come on spot? Uh, yeah. Of course, I'm here. Uh, yeah, Namshit, can you please introduce our next panel? I'm going to share my screen. So our next panel is, yeah. Uh, thanks, Rupas. Um, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Namshit. I'd like to introduce uh, Shabir Madatul. Uh, Shabir is a cloud technical lead uh, with uh, over 16 years of uh, experience, and he is a graduate in uh, information technology. Uh, Shabir has worked with uh, companies like uh, Sesame Technologies. I have, I, I hope I've uh, pronounced that right. Uh, MPCB in Mauritius, World Bank, Santa. Uh, Naim, can you uh, Nam, uh, Namshit, can you speak up a bit because your volume is a bit low? How about now, Riyasko? Yeah, it's better now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll uh, start. Uh, so Shabir has worked with companies like Sesame Technologies in Calicut, MPCB uh, in Mauritius, World Bank, US, Santander, uh, UK, and uh, DTC London. Um, welcome aboard, uh, Shabir. Uh, so Shabir, Bhai, I've got two questions for you. Uh, the first one is, um, can you explain uh, from today's context uh, the different ways to learn skills in uh, in data analytics? Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Nams. Um, uh, yes, um, uh, uh, Siad already mentioned. Siad and Babusha already mentioned uh, many courses. You know, in my experience, the, uh, there are different way we can uh, learn skill set. You know, uh, if I think about uh, my situation when I was in uh, when I finished my graduation, 
Yes, you know, I didn't get, I don't have, I didn't have much money to buy subscription from Plural Site or Udemy. Yes, in that case, what I would suggest, you know, there are many free courses available in Google. Say, for example, uh, learn digital with Google. You know, if you search uh, learn digital with Google in Google, then you will get a free courses, many free courses, you know, uh, related to data science and the data analytics. So I am going to share the link in, uh, in the chat window. So uh, that's absolutely free um, because, you know, that, you know, if when you take that course, you know, it will test your skills at the same time. You know, there are exams, you know, each after each modules. And another way I would suggest, I usually follow that way to improve my skills and uh, um, get the real time experience, you know, just participate the code hackathon. You know, uh, the code hackathon, there is one at the moment is running. Uh, it's provided by, it's supported by IBM. Uh, it is, uh, I think they also provide a cash price. So I think if I'm not wrong, it's 50 lakh for the first price. Yeah. So there you can choose different language, which, is, you know, either you can choose Python, either you can choose R to, um, uh, to do the coding. So they will give you the problems and you just do the coding in that frame. So that's the best way to, uh, uh, to prove your skill set. You know, what is the other idea, if you, idea behind if you uh, participate in the code hackathon, the companies are watching your programming skill. Yeah, that will signal to the people that you have the programming skill. Yeah, so that's the um, main achievement if you participate in the code hackathon because many companies are watching. Yes, you have a program skill. Yes, then they can contact you. So one another thing I would suggest in case if you are still looking for a job, uh, there are many startup companies in uh, in Kerala. Many other. Some of um, I have noticed some of my friends have started uh, startup companies and they are looking at fresh graduates with the skills, with the, you know, the programming skills like Python, uh, some are using big data even, you know, I have mentioned in my uh, profile, uh, the same technology in Calicut. I have started my career in the same te uh, technology, which is a small company, but very good place to uh, uh, do, you know, uh, start a career in case if you're still searching a job there are many companies even in in Calicut um, there so another way um, I'm going to share the hackathon link uh, and there are other sites called free um, free code camp dot org that will give you the free courses and at the same time they will give you the certification as well but not from the Google so uh, that's a different way you can uh, uh, there are different these are the different ways you can earn uh, uh, skills nums yeah th thank you uh, shakir bhai that was uh, very helpful and also i think we have to stress the fact that learning never stops even after your first job throughout your career you're constantly learning yes so that's one aspect that one has to uh, bear in mind yeah uh, that's I, right I have, I have uh, one more question for you uh, so I'm, I'm not sure if many of us have heard of salesforce uh, but for those who have, is Salesforce a good career option? Yes, uh, why I have um, included Salesforce, because of course I'm working as a data integration uh, integrator into Salesforce. Um, so uh, many of, maybe they are not aware, you know, many of you are not aware of Salesforce. It's a, it's a CRM tool, it's a product, in case if you don't want to do the programming, you know, or, or the coding. So, Salesforce is a product, yeah, it's a CRM tool where you can um, learn about that product, yeah, there are many ways you can learn about that product. The first uh, thing I'm going to suggest is YouTube. First to understand that product, what is CRM, what is uh, Salesforce? And the second bit I would suggest, you know, anyway, I'm going to share the link uh, of some CRM source. Uh, the CRM, um, uh, the Salesforce itself, they are providing uh, uh, different courses uh, in their official site uh, called Trialhead. Yeah, in Salesforce you can choose either administration site, which is which you don't need to do much coding, and the other way is the developer site. Yes, 
uh, you may need to uh, understand a little bit on the coding side, especially on Java. Yeah, so I'm going to share the trial head um, course details, which is completely free. And, um, and the, at the end, they will give you the discounts as well, you know, in case if you want to do, if you want to take the certification. Usually the certificate cost, it will, it will cost you $200. Uh, usually they, they will give a 50% discount in, uh, uh, if, you part, uh, if you attend their training session. Yeah, so I'm going to share the trial head details in the chat window, also the certification details of Salesforce. The Salesforce at the moment is the fastest growing cloud technology, you know, the cloud product. It's most uh, demand skill set in the UK at the moment, in not only UK, around the world. Yeah, so that's, uh, uh, Nams, that's about a little right. bit about Salesforce, right. yeah. Thank you, Shabarbhai. And just to add a note on that, uh, I was part of a project on Vodafone where we rolled out uh, Vodafone as the, uh, the Salesforce platform as the central CRM application for 32 different countries. Uh, and that was one of the largest Salesforce implementation to date. So I just wanted to add to the, the popularity of the tool. Uh, thanks, Sams. Uh, Rubas, could you share the screen again? Sir? All right. Okay, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, the, our next uh, yeah, name again. Uh, your uh, your uh, sorry, Nams, your your volume. I'll I'll try to keep the mic close. To me. I hope that's okay. Yeah, that's better. Um, yeah. Um, so I'd like to introduce our next panelist, uh, Abdul Salam Kundamal. So Salam Bai is known for taking on many roles, but in today's context, he's a IT solution architect. He's been working in the industry for over twenty-two years. Has done masters in comp computer applications. Uh, Salamba has worked for some renowned companies like HAL India, Siemens UK, Mercedes Benz UK, uh, NSI uh, in UK, and he has uh, certifications include enterprise trainer, uh, Google certified architect, and Amazon Web Services architect professional. Um, Salamba, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I've got two questions for you. So the question number one is, um, we have uh, seen and heard in, uh, that the political leaders are using big data for their advantages, uh, especially during elections. Um, can you shed some light on how they do it and what is the ethical stand on this one? So Salama, it's not audible. I think you're on mute. You're mute, I think, Salam. No, it's still not working. Still, uh, you're unmute, but still not working. Yeah, one second. Something wrong with your. Is audio. it better now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's yeah. audible. Uh, okay, so um, it's basically, I, I'm I'm driving. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in the car, so I just stopped just to answer that question. Um, the simple answer is, uh, you know, how I mean. How they do it, it I think uh, um, Siad has already explained, you know, um, the social media uptake, uh, people kind of post um, information in there. And, uh, you know, from there, they kind of create um, models, which is what is popular. Yeah. This is like, you know, most of the, if you are in the UK, you can see if there is a white van, which is like, you know, um, a serving something like, a, 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 you know, tech. BT or Vodafone, they will say, am I driving good um, or am I driving right? So the only people will call that number is to complain about that. Most of the, I mean, it's basically to ascertain how good the driver is. Is he behaving okay? But the problem is actually we will, the human nature is we will only use it for complaining. So 80% of the calls they get is about their driving is not good. Nobody calls and say, ah, he's very good. And that's unfortunate situation. And that is exactly the same in, in the social medias you know, area as well. People will only call them to, you know, if they have a problem. So they will get all these value. And they, as Sia said, they will make a model out of it and say, that is the one which I had to adopt. And unfortunately, most of the time, that might not be the, the will of the, the, the bigger crowd. Uh, so he, whether it is ethical or Ethical or not, I would say no, it's not um, ethical because there are people without a voice in there. There are people who don't use, uh, you know, social media. There are people 
who doesn't have a phone or you know even if they have a phone they don't want to use social media uh, so but the problem is uh, you know when they say something to please that crowd that get louder again so it's kind of snowball effect so uh, you know i would say the ethical question say no it's not ethical yeah, i would say it is you know unethical and uh, even immoral uh, but it, unfortunately we will live in a world of uh, you know social media and you know people like um, uh, you know trump has used it very very well and uh, you know uh, and in, in india as well modi government also has used it very well and uh, the simple answer is it's not ethical but unfortunately that is exactly what is happening all right uh, uh, thank you so much uh, can i just add one one, one line yeah that? please by uh, all means yeah uh, as as alappai said uh, whether it's ethical or not ethical uh, but the reality is data is the river our data is uh, in someone's hands in a few few years time Uh, facebook is going to tell you what is new in in, in, the, in the world and google map will uh, sh- uh, tell you uh, how to go and where to go and just eat maybe uh, telling you uh, what to eat and maybe amazon will be telling you what to buy and netflix will be telling you uh, what to watch and in, in if you are interested in movies why because they know better than what you know about yourself Uh, there is a term called uh, human hacking in very well, it's it's sl- 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 started slowly uh, even now in few years time uh, a computer know better than you know about you so whatever it is ethical or not ethical it is going to be i agree with uh, salamka is not ethical but that is the world going to be unfortunately so i take uh, giving you back <laughs> Yeah, th- th- thank you for that interesting insight. Um, uh, Salam, I have one more question for you. Um, from today's uh, topic of discussion uh, and the context, uh, where do you think we can get some big data set to to play around with? Ideally, uh, free of charge, that is. Uh, yeah, uh, again, a uh, very good question. I think somebody already touched on it. Um, if you, um, you know, the, the good way is to learn in myself. I, I am not a person who can listen for, you know, more than 10 minutes. I think most of the people here knows about that. And uh, I, I'm, you will learn more about when you actually do it. So I would definitely recommend if you are interested in get an account in uh, gcp.google.com. so that is google cloud platform and the moment if you have a, a you know a, you need to have a gmail account i think yeah, so if you get in that they will give you 300 dollars free of uh, free credit and you can do whatever you want within a year so we, uh, so whichever is earlier so either you can you know make use of that 300 dollars in a, in a year or Uh, sorry in in 3 months if you are doing a lot or if you are using it you know slowly you can uh, you know, extend it up to a year and you can even you know um, host a website in there and we have done quite a few i mean if you look at the get you know even excel.org now they are all free of charge 100% free i can you know take a, a, a class on it if you really interested uh, how to do that and uh, there is in especially in uh, google there is something called bigquery uh, that is uh, you know one of the tools uh, you know these guys might be using bigquery is uh, it's one, you know it's an emerging tool it is all about big data you can see the word big itself is there and if you go there you can get some um, you know some terabytes of data free of charge uh, and they are anonymized uh, one of them is actually <laughs> the the crime um, data of this city i'm i'm sitting at the moment which is london and as you can imagine there's a it's a big set of data there and they made it free of char- uh, freely available there again you know if they are not the real names or real address or anything like that fully anonymized and another data you get is um, uh, the taxi rides in the in in um, in new york the yellow taxi rides and there are a huge set of data really i mean i think the the, the yellow taxi is about 6 terabytes or something and you can just play around with it you know just go there and and, and do your research and this is the best learn and uh, learning tool for myself i mean that's how i learn if you go there and play then you got the you will have some questions so how do they do that then do some research on it you, you might get a google good you know google video or you know there may be articles based on that 
So in my way of learning is actually learning the other way. <laughs> you go there and learn, or, you know, that towards in you know, a backward. You might be missing something in there, some terminologies, but that's all right. You know, as far as you get the idea, you, then you you can you can work on it. Hope that um, answer your question. Uh, yeah, kind of. Um, uh, well, some some of the points just went over my head, uh, but I'm sure there are people who might have uh, <laughs> grasped it better than me. Uh, I think there were some interesting aspects there, right? And um, is there a way that you could, uh, you know, put that in the chat on the sources that you said we could capture the data just for yeah. the benefit of everybody? Uh, so we, we have it documented. Uh, yeah, I have put about the GCP in there um, earlier, uh, but unfortunately I'm on a phone now. As I say, I'm driving yeah, back home. You're, you're driving. Yes, well, whenever it is safe to do Talking about the Google Maps, I just uh, sat on the, on the, you know, on my car and uh, you know, looked on the on, on on the map, and it already said before I I was touching the screen, the home address was showing there. So the car knows where I was about to go. Um, I'm, I came to London. It knows. It kind of when I touched it on the screen, the home was coming on the screen as it is. So somebody was touching, and this is all about. I mean, the, this is a, a, a Tesla car. It it, it takes about uh, seven hundred eighty million miles of data already within two years and every hour it adds one million hours of driving data so it knows how i drive so if i drive for one hour it will create you know not just me around the world about you know now it might happen this is about last year's data yeah if i probably now if i have about 40 minutes it get one million hours of driving data and if you can see what they can do out of that data, you know, uh, that is gold mine for them. So this is just about you know how I'm, you know, whether the car is on the center of the line, and whether I'm parking it okay, and those kind of things they know. So every 40 minutes, probably they are getting about one million sort of driving data. As I said, that is gold mine. That is, this has about you know about 20 cameras around this car and it kind of looks at every minute in a world. So by the time I reach home, it might have about a terabyte of data, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, thank, thank you, Salam Bhai. Uh, no further questions. Rubas Bhai, over to you. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> you know, I can, I can see a lot of questions have already been uh, answered by the panelists and the speakers, but there is one question, you know, which I found a bit interesting is, uh, you know, it's for uh, over to you, speakers and panelists. How does a day as a data scientist or a data engineer look, uh, you know, in your day-to-day -day life, you know, in your office? Uh, can I take that or? Yeah, please, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, it, it's, again, depends on who, um, the role you are doing. Um, I mentioned earlier, uh, depends on the company, the size of the company and the role you are doing. If you are um, uh, just a data engineer uh, who is working on uh, data cleansing ETL activities, um, you will be going and uh, working on a project, or a certain set of project uh, to take all the data from different sources. And uh, you need to do extract, transform, load, and transform again, uh, that kind of information. Again, if you go deeper, you need an architect over there, you need a designer, how you need to model uh, different uh, uh, the data from different sources together and put together. So if you are a designer, you, are, you may be doing only that. And if, if it is a medium company, you may be doing that designing and developing using one of the tools, maybe BigQuery or Redshift or whatever was mentioned earlier. So that's in simple words, that's it. And if you say, if you are a uh, data science engineer, like uh, a data science research engineer, you will be uh, uh, going and analyzing what is the problem and what kind of solution or what kind of algorithm you will be writing. And uh, you will maybe uh, writing that uh, algorithm with the use of uh, uh, R or Python libraries. So. In a simple way, uh, it depends on, on the role. Uh, uh, yes, uh, or anyone else like Babusha, uh, can you actually elaborate about how a data engineer's day to day life is in the office? Yeah, I think she had already covered that. Uh, anyway, um, nothing much to uh, more to add, so I don't want to waste uh, uh, people's time. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Babusha. Uh, you know, one question which has come is, uh, which platform is best for data visualization? 
Is it Tableau or Power BI? Okay, I'll take that. Uh, which, is, which is an interesting question. Um, people normally look at uh, something called uh, Gartner's. There is, a, there is a, 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 an independent body called Gartner's. Uh, they normally uh, do an analysis, an independent analysis every year on different uh, aspects of technology. So if you look at visualization, um, they do a, a Gartner's analysis. Gartner's do an analysis end of every year. So uh, the top two now is Power BI and uh, uh, Tableau. And there are many others in the market, Cognos Analytics. There are ClickView, there are Lucas, there are many, many other uh, ones. So these are the top two. But again, you always need to keep on uh, the Gartner's analysis. Google have its, its own uh, platform as well. Um, AWS as its own platform as well. Okay. So the best place is uh, to know which one is the best, uh, the top one based on really uh, the search analysis. Gartner will tell you every year. Okay, let me go to a live question. I can see Mr. Arif has been raising hand for the past. Uh, okay. so let me ask him to unmute his. Um, you know, I've asked him to start his video and unmute. Mr. Arif, can you hear us? I think we need to unmute. Yeah. Yeah. Can you uh, hear me now? Yeah. 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 <coughs> thanks. Thanks for talk. I know Siad is laughing because I told him what he's going to ask him. <laughs> but I think it's it's a question for all the panelists. So uh, I'm sure most of you know that uh, the virtual healthcare market is expanding big time, and Corona has basically changed the goalposts very quickly in a very short period of time. For those who are running their own SMEs or have developed technology that they want to use for patient care, what we're finding is that compliance with data control and data processing is becoming quite a challenge and there doesn't seem to be any kind of clear guidance available. There are a lot of toolkits available. I'm sure you all know about the GDPR toolkit and the, uh, the uh, data security and protection toolkit. My question is, a lot of the data is now not being stored on hard you know, disks and things like that. And a lot of the data storage is going towards cloud service. Where do we stand as SMEs or as companies in terms of liability or uh, following security standards for data that is stored in cloud service? Now I understand why you're laughing, Arun Bhai. Okay. You've um, just put all the panelists into spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, can I take? Uh, can I answer a bit of that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah go on, yeah. Sir. Go on. Okay. Sir. okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, so the simple uh, answer is um, people have uh, uh, a thought that the cloud is not safe okay. earlier, but. Is your mobile is actually safe? Is your computer at home is actually safe? Is your laptop is actually safe? Because it is connected to the wide world. Anyone can hack you, your camera, your hard disk, uh, and, and, and get into that. Well, what kind of security you put together for your uh, laptop or your system, which will be much less compared to uh, what the cloud uh, providers have put together. For example, Google, Amazon, IBM, or Microsoft, they have put the best heads on the uh, viral, uh, sorry, security field in the world. So they can create much better uh, barrier, much better security than what I can do or what you can do for your hard, hard disk in your computer or sure. my computer, my laptop in my home. That's a simple answer. But okay. it, I, 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 I remember listening to one of the talk uh, and somebody was saying, which is the safest the data in the world? There is no safe data in the world. But only thing you can protect as much as you can, which yeah. the cloud companies can do much better. The data governance is uh, is a maturing area because the uh, exponential growth of data is so fast. Yeah, See, and I think uh, the yeah, other I mean, issue obviously uh, is that uh, the the fines that the ICO issue for data breach is almost it can go up to 20 million euros or four percent of the annual turnover, whichever is higher. So there is a lot at stake for companies who hold data or you know control data or process data so uh, the other the other issue i guess i guess is about iso 27001 and that kind of certification very very costly exercise for smes to follow yeah. so 
my, my query is if the cloud servers have got the ISO 27001, can we use their ISO 27001 certification as vicarious protection for our data that we're using for our company or our apps? So, um, uh, Arifai, I think I can probably take that question. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, it depends upon what service you are using um, with from the cloud. Yeah, there is something called managed <coughs> services and unmanaged service. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, it would have been better if I can show this. So basically, you know, if you in, in the in the, in the beginning, uh, you know, you, if you are just using uh, just you know hosting your website there with, with a something called EC2 server, like you know, there you are just hosting a server. The liability is hundred percent on you. Yeah. Okay. Then it slowly goes into managed services, like you know, Google or you know the, the cloud provider manages it for you. You just use your service, and there are. You know, there are some in some ways, you know, it's shared in some of the aspects. And if it go deeper and deeper, there are hundred percentage man, managed by them. Uh, and that would be something like, uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, Google Docs. Yeah. You just use it. Okay. In that one, actually, you don't have much of a, you know, um, you know, liability on it because that's a service they give you and you just use it. So depending upon where you stay on that scale, uh, you know, then only we can answer that where it, the responsibility lies. I don't okay. think you can use their certification because, um, you know, if you look at the, the, the small print, you will always see ultimately everything is your responsibility. Yeah, okay. They are yep. just making it easy for you, okay. by, you know, by providing a service. But if you look at the, there are, you know, if you look at the manual service, the more deeper you go, the lesser responsibility you have. Okay. But in most of the cases, the, the, you know, if you want you know, full control of the system, you don't use, tend to use their fully managed system. For example, there is something called a, you know, a serverless technology. In that one is actually a lot of, about 80% of the responsibilities with the cloud provider. Because, you know, the, everything, you are using pretty much everything of you, theirs. You, are, you don't have much. So it really depends upon which service you are using. It's quite okay. it's difficult to answer, the, you know, answer, give you okay. a, a, yeah, a, a final fine. answer for that. So there, there, I presume there'd be a subscription service for a, the, the cost would be different for a fully managed system compared to absolutely. partially managed absolutely. system. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. That's right. yeah. okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Salam. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I would actually, I can see a few of the queries are also, you know, whether these presentations will be available. I would just quickly share my screen to kind of introduce our website. It's exluk.org. And here you can find any upcoming or any past events along with their YouTube or you know, further details. So I encourage you to please uh, go through the website and you can get a bit of info of the past events. Thank you. Um, over to you, Ramshad Bhai. Uh, can you see any of the questions which I have missed? I think... Uh... I think there was one question that that I had made a particular note of. Um, I'm just going to read it out and I'll let the panelists uh, respond if, if that's something that they are comfortable to answer. So this is a question from uh, from Nishad. Not sure if he's still on the... the yeah, he's still there, yeah. Okay. So he says, he's in, uh, I'm interested in spatio-temporal data. Would like to know any good repository that provides trajectory of multiple moving objects over a geographical area. It will be also be helpful if you suggest a good simulator. Yeah, can I? Uh, I think uh, I don't know if Riaz is still here. Riaz Mohammed. No, 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 he has left. He uh, left. Is he okay? Okay, he, he has actually left. answered that. Provides some answer to that. Okay, fine. Um, I'll leave it to the panelists. Then, yeah. Sorry, then that's my oversight. I, if it's already answered, then. No, no, no. I think he had provided some answer on to, on the uh, chat window, but I, unfortunately, I think he's left. Uh, but uh, we can. Anybody like to add on the panelists? You know, add on to his answer. Sorry, uh, sorry, Namishita. Uh, uh, if I remember the question correctly, um, is there any spatial analytical data which somebody can use it, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, are there any, uh, if we can suggest a good simulator for spatial temporal data? Okay, um, my, uh, my short, short answer uh, as of my knowledge, I don't know anything which uh, what I can do, I can check everything. That's, that's sorry. Yeah. I think he has replied. I think I'm just going through Mr. Ria's, uh, you know, reply. It says like it is uh, kind of, it's, it's quite specific to the different organizations. 
So, you know, there are very few out of the box repositories. Uh, I hope um, Nishad is okay with that reply. And I think uh, over, uh, Nishad has also asked another question. Uh, or if I'm, I think it was about um, visualization of maps, I think somewhere around I, I saw that. Amshit, can you find that? I think it was asked in the beginning somewhere. Um, I'm just scrolling through. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe uh, I have made a group of five questions. If I can skip to the other one, and Rubas, in the meantime, if you could look for sure. that yeah. specific question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, I'm going to ask a question, but I'm not sure if it's been already answered, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, this is with regards to uh, use certainty to define statistics. Uh, this is a question from Amal. Uh, it goes, can we really use certainty uh, certainty to define statistics? The deterministic count of fish in the ball would fall under descriptive statistics. Okay. Um, so is that the question? Is it there? That's, that's a question slash statement. statement. Okay. Uh, again, uh, my, I, my, my main objective was to, not to go through the actual um, definition of statistics at all, uh, just to give a small idea what uh, is certain, uh, because uh, we uh, when we say about data analytics, which is all about the data in the past and the present, what is certain there. When it comes to uh, data science, where we use statistics, is mostly uh, uh, for your predictive models, which is uh, uh, to predict um, uh, the finance or anything else. So it's just, uh, I use it as just an analogy, just to make it um, the presentation useful. Um, if you go deeper, I agree some of those things, yes. Um, uh, there are, you, you need to look at different aspects on the uh, statistical side, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um... Maybe I'll, I'll ask one more question if time permits. Riyaska, how are we with time? Uh, we are okay. I think we need to wind up now, but I think uh, I, I can see a few career related questions on here. Um, but I just quickly ask so that you know, people I think who want to get one is one, I, I think I'm sure I'll come back to you, but just let uh, if you want to go to this one is uh, Siad and uh, Muhammad, when we are switching our career to data science, which domain we have to select? What is the criteria to select a domain? <coughs> now, I don't know what he's switching from. So that's a question. Okay, so Siad, do you want me to take that one? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, somebody I asked the, uh, Siad, I think Mohammed is taking that one. Go on. Sorry, Mohammed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go okay, on, so, so for the domain wise, I would recommend uh, domain is not important. Like, I think possibly your concept, if you're moving to data science, your concept is very, very important. Domain can be anything like if you take my example, like I was working for the game analytics, then I moved to the telecom, again I went to the IoT. So domain can be anything. As long as your concepts are good, your algorithm is right, you can move to the any domain. This is what I would say in short. Um, so, uh, thanks, Mohammed. Can I just add one more? Uh, okay. yeah, go on. uh, in one way, uh, Mohammed is right because if you are, uh, want to have a very technical career, you remember the three circles, the mathematics and uh, technical. So if you are only on technical, you want to have the career based on that, which is fine. But if you are on a domain, if you are on a, a healthcare domain or if you are on a financial domain, if you are uh, your, your expertise is a credit risk analysis in, in financial industry. And uh, you, if you add um, the one of the visualization tool, and if you know uh, a bit of R and Python, that will actually help you to, get, uh, to progress you as a, a credit risk analyst in the field. So anything, any, if you have any domain knowledge, and if you plug with uh, that with uh, a bit of data science, technical side or programming side, that will make you a specialized expert and analyst in that field. Okay, um, I think there was another thing about careers. I think, uh, are there any good opportunities for students studying data science in the UK? So anybody, any of the students who are studying data science in the UK, uh, sorry, you're studying data science, is there any good opportunities uh, in, in UK? Okay. Uh, partly quote that, but I think any of you can take it. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, sorry, uh, just uh, touch that again because I mentioned earlier. Um, does the job path to UK for any technical um, as uh, technical uh, job aspirants is through the point-based system, uh, which is a bit hard. 
Um, so you need to check the points. If you can get 70 points, you can come here. But unfortunately, it is a bit um, tough nowadays. Okay, I mean, I don't know, Mohammed, if you want to come, uh, come in there, anything to add? Yeah. No, so one thing I want to add possibly for data scientists, I think as a job perspective, whether how you can come to UK, but what I would say for data scientists, what, this is my personal experience, like because I was working Vodafone. So you can imagine like I was working with data scientist team. I, we were the only two architect and engineer, but rest of the data scientist. So for the data scientist, I think, I think I can see that lots of jobs are coming. But with the data scientist, you should have the technical knowledge. Only data scientist is not very important. So there you can say data scientist, machine learning engineer or data scientist is a combination of, <coughs> like I would say, uh, both possibly technical plus or knowledge or your algorithm knowledge. So I think for data scientists, there are lots of jobs available. I would, what I would recommend. Yeah, but, uh, but one thing, um, you know, uh, the things are uh, changing so fast in this space. So what technology you use might be different. Uh, tomorrow so you need to be you know well ahead all the time so yes definitely not be, yeah so you're right uh, the concept is going to same exactly yeah technology exactly technology, yeah, technology, technology is going to change there is no like yeah. uh, today we can't say like tomorrow we'll be using a fast park or something different language Up absolutely yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think there's a, there's a comment on here uh, by um, one of the participants it says mr kadir it says i hope data uh, data science jobs are less whereas machine learning is increasing is that is that correct or is it actually? Well, I, I, I would have thought it's the other way around. It's, I mean, both would have been increasing, isn't it? Can, no, I, can I answer that, please? Yeah, yeah, go on. Okay, um, which is which is I can I can tell you straight away. Uh, if you look at the, my first map, we are on fifty-five um, zettabytes of data. In five years' time, it is going to increase into another sixty percentage. That's a prediction, sixty to seventy percentage. So. Definitely the data side jobs will be here, but we don't know what form it will be. Uh, mostly, uh, it will, uh, how, how quickly it will change into a new one. So I was listening to one of the talk by Yuval Harari. He is a, a famous historian and predictor in this world, he's a researcher in this field. What he is saying is the changes will be fast. There will be data related jobs again. And what form, what name it will be called, we don't know, but there will be data related jobs. And again, if you are a, a graduate or postgraduate, one of the things is saying, uh, there will be changes coming fast and quick. And as a human being, as a homo sapien, you need to be uh, adaptable to change more and more frequently in the coming future. So, uh, it's a, it's a, a bit a uh, wider answer, so I don't I think it will uh, give a bit more insight into that. Riyaska? Yeah, um, and there's one more again uh, related to the job. What are the, what are employers now? Uh, Siad, you're a prospective employer. What are you looking in a graduate data scientist? That's a good question. Uh, it's I know you're uh, looking for a lot of things, but you know what he meant is what are you looking for in a graduate data scientist? What is the oomph thing that you want from me? You know, we're going to employ him. Uh, you know, this is uh, that's a very good question. And um, again, I, I touched a few of these things earlier because uh, the most important as a graduate, uh, getting into uh, a career is, is the first hurdle. Uh, well, the competition is so much uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the new world and people can access a lot of information, learn too many things. So the first thing I always say, if you are a graduate, show that you are uh, uh, the, sorry, uh, Siaz, it's graduate data scientist, okay? Oh, sorry, graduate data scientist. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, um, what, what I'm going is looking as a graduate uh, data scientist. So, uh, so the first thing is you, you, you already have uh, a, a good qualification or a degree if, uh, in your pocket. So next thing is uh, go to uh, Google or any of these, uh, Google, IBM or any of these and get certified and get uh, show that you have more technology on your pocket, you more understanding on the pocket. And the uh, other thing that also they mentioned in between, if you can write some article, uh, be in LinkedIn, um, show that uh, you can uh, present a lot of, uh, present your skills in a good way and hackathons, etc. Just show up. There are a, good, a lot of platforms everywhere. Uh, in, in, you have uh, different platforms in uh, Google, Azure, and etc. You can uh, answer some of the questions and you can compete with others. That's the way you can get into it. Okay. 
Uh, I think Python, uh, learning Python, SQL, R is a must, I think, for data science. Yeah, so Python, is, Python, is very, yeah. Python is very important. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as a fresher, I would uh, look for uh, kind of internships. Basically, if you find uh, hard to find a uh, entry job, then keep on looking for internships. Um, that, that will help you. Once you get into the company, then it's easy to go permanent and find, uh, you know, to move to another career. Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, there is one question from, uh, sorry, I think it was, anybody wanted to come in? Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is, I just got, uh, you know, thanks to Nishad, he has reposted his question. And the question was, how to visualize map data? Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that, yeah. Okay, I think um, <laughs> I can take that. Uh, how to visualize map data? It's, um, it's, a, it's a very, a, a bit technical question. What I can tell you is, uh, the map data we normally visualize based on two different aspects because you need to have the data on your side for your um, whatever the domain is so you need to show that uh, the number of covid patients in different uh, districts so all the um, uh, points all the areas in the world is um, been identified by two uh, different parameters one is longitude and latitude so so you relate those city data to uh, your actual data. For example, you have a city data for Calicut. You have a latitude and longitude point, and then at the other end, for you have the number of COVID patients. So you can relate them on the map, and you can show them. There are the tools uh, may, may work differently, but that's the in simple way. That's the way it works. Okay. There's another question here. I think he has been an active contributor. I think now we are left with, uh, I, I believe because it's been over time, we are left with uh, the actual genuine participants who are actually in the, in the business, which is okay. one way you can go to the more serious uh, stuff of the discussion. So uh, there's one, I think Hafjash Usman, I mean, he's been very, very active and he's been contributing. He's asked a question, can, can we explore CAG, Kaggle product, projects? K-A-G-G-L-E. I, I don't have a clue what that is, but I'm just uh, answering the question. K A G G L E. I don't know if anybody knows that. Can can explore Kaggle projects. I think Havjash may be still in the um, in the audience. I think we can ask him himself if he's there. Um, I don't know. I uh, sorry. Uh, I'm not very much um, uh, aware of the Kaggle project. Um, I think it is a machine learning. Uh, 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 Havjash is there. I'm new to him. Havjash is there anything more to add, Havjash? Uh, yes, actually, so Kaggle is an uh, open source, uh, you know, it's an open source pl platform. Anybody can, you know, those who are interested in, you know, data science or data analysts. So there are so many, you know, uh, data sets they are providing. So there are co so many competitions also happening here, happening there. So people who are interested and, you know, uh, so mostly this, what is happening is, I mean, you know, those who, those who wanted to, you know, uh, enter into this data science or data analyst area. Uh, so how can they, you know, explore that opportunity? So because, you know, uh, how we can, you know, achieve that experience. So using this Kaggle platform, we can just enter to that, you know, we can, there are so many data sets we can work on and people are there to guide us. And, you know, we can work on this uh, different, different aspects of, you know, real time examples and, you know, we can work on that. And so Kaggle, you can go to the www.kaggle.com. You can see this. I mean, you can create an account and you can participate in this competitions. Uh, there are so many things are there. Okay. So machine learning, data science, data analyst, so many things are there. Uh, the, 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 good, to, good to know that, uh, Hapjash, um, Hapjash, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think um, uh, you, you, that's one of the platform. At the same time, you, you, have, um, uh, you can uh, get the data from different open universities or open places. And um, you can do the same kind of thing in different um, providers, technical providers, Google's or Azure's or even Tableau or whatever it is you can do and you can uh, present it to Tableau public and uh, it's the same. They have a user community for each and every uh, companies nowadays because they realize that is the way they can get into the uh, people or uh, as a marketing uh, uh, idea. Okay. Yeah, um, sorry, anybody was about to talk? Uh, there's, there's a question here. From Nishad, I don't know if this has been answered. Any scope for a PhD holder in data mining in college universities outside India? PhD holder in data mining. Any scope for a PhD holder in data mining in college universities outside India? 
I don't know if anybody is aware of that. Anybody wants to take it? Oh, me? Data mining. Sorry, panelists, anybody wants to answer? Or oh, otherwise, I, 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 I can take it. Actually, it, it can help for people like me if you can explain what is data mining. Yeah, yeah, I would. Just, yeah, go <laughs> on. Okay. Um, um, data mining um, is a few years ago uh, before we have. Uh, uh, it's, it's a term, I think in 1996 or somebody. Uh, come up with the, this term before data science evolved in the picture where it's nothing but um, uh, it, it's it, another way it's actually getting the insight and useful uh, information out of uh, the big set of data well uh, at that time we there were people didn't uh, anticipate that you have um, the power of the computers computing power and storage power will be like Today, the number of data you're getting will be like today. So that's a, a slightly earlier uh, definition. Uh, but data mining still exist because uh, exists because uh, the companies still have the information and data, and you need to get useful data out of that. So um, in, in a nutshell, that's uh, again it's very closely related to uh, data science. Uh, I'll answer the question. Uh, if somebody is having a PhD in data science or data mining, uh, for example, uh, is there an opportunity outside of UK, uh, India? Um, it depends. The UK, it depends on different countries. Uh, UK have their own rules. Uh, if you look at Canada or Australia, they have a bit more um, easier uh, immigration route. Uh, US as well, uh, the visa structure. So it all so depends on that. So it is it, it so it is more with the it's less with the scope but it is more with the immigration policies of each country. Isn't it? Yeah, it, scope is always there. Uh, yeah. If you look at uh, UK, UK is a financial hub of the world. Uh, 70, I think seventy six percentage of our revenue is coming financial services. So yeah. data is always there. There's a good scope in there, but it's more than that. How you can get into it. Because companies won't offer you a visa straight away until unless it is um, that position or that role is not available here. Okay. Uh, See, so yeah, I mean, I'll take just one more question and hand over to Amshit. Sure. Uh, sorry, Amshit, uh, before we can uh, start uh, winding off officially. So there is a, again, I think it's uh, Hafjash who's asked this question. People who have eight plus years of experience. And who want they switch to want to switch their career from different technology to data science area? What is the recommended way? So basically, somebody with eight years of experience in a different technology area, they want to switch to data science. What is the recommended way? Because most employers will look for prior experience as hiring criteria. Is there any way of overcoming that? I think you kind of touched upon. Uh, yes, uh, Riaska, sorry to sorry to interrupt. I think yeah. Mubarak has also posted something very similar to that. Yeah, uh, you can see that it in the latest yeah, yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah, it says, yeah, go on, go on, uh, uh, that. So he has done BSc maths uh, nearly 20 years ago, and he has done his B in IT three years back. So he is now working as an IT project PM, and uh, he would like to move into data science science career. So he's asking about the best career plan for him to be uh, to get into data analysis or any data related jobs. I think both of these questions. Uh, to me, it looks very similar, but uh, maybe the panelists. So may... Different careers, they want to move into do, uh, data science. Data, um, yeah. So, what do we do? What is the best advice? And these are people who have been in the business for a while eight can years, I, years. Can I throw my two pennies worth of. Yeah, is that, uh, is that Namshid? Yeah, go on, Namshid. Yeah, go on, Namshid. Yeah, yeah, and I'll try to speak. Yeah, I think you're, you're loud, 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 loud. Yeah. yeah, go on. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, so, so I, my advice is um, somebody with these many years of experience, especially as an IT project manager, and to, to throw that all away and jump into a new career path. For me, it doesn't sound, I mean, if I were in this position, I would think a hundred times before I did that because I have made myself, uh, I mean, all those years as an IT project manager, I should now be aiming higher and shifting track at this stage. And in, actually now at a beginner level, I, I don't think that's a, a wise career move. Rather, I would actually do some kind of certification on data and then move into a, an, a project which are more data oriented. So I still wear my IT project manager hat, but then I'm more, I'm more focused on data oriented projects. Then you get the best of both worlds. But to give, give it all away, throw it all the project management experience, which is very crucial in this country and many other countries as well. For me, uh, I, I would... I would find it very strange somebody would want to throw it all away and shift 
uh, completely shift to a completely new career path. And uh, does that answer the question for uh, uh, Vijay also? Yeah, and, because and anybody else has got any comments on the on the panel um, on that? I can uh, add my two cents on that. Maybe. <laughs> uh, yes, um, I agree with the um, shift um, uh, on that one. At the same time, if he is a keen mathematician or he is um, having a passion on mathematics and statistics, um, he can he can. Uh, try because i have heard in my career somebody uh, uh, somebody did this uh, in, in career uh, the best way is always uh, as we something. hello I'm sorry can is that yeah the best way is always uh, uh, learn r or python and uh, started implementing there are a lot of libraries in python and r you can use all the statistical mathematical knowledge and also uh, learn a sequel and start showing uh, start doing more research and show you need to you need to put more effort uh, to show that you are much better than some of the other yeah. guys in this area to yeah. ask you to start your hello sorry i've just uh, i think salam i think i just muted him yeah go on okay so uh, the the way is learn uh, these areas because uh, uh, python and uh, r is very close to uh, oh, it's it's used for it, the, the, those are the programming languages uh, today in today's world uh, used for statistical uh, modeling and uh, mathematical if you have a mathematics degree then learn uh, do some certification if you have uh, you yeah, have these uh, technical jams and uh, actively participate and actively show that you are good in that so that's the way you can you can get into it. it's it's a it's a big move but if you are a keen mathematician a statistician, a statistician it is possible uh, that's what my thought is yeah i mean i mean as a as a person who generally advises for careers you know I, i'm not anyway no nobody to talk about it careers but i think the big question i would ask is why do you want to make that move is there a reason because your job is it uh, as a problem or is it a, a necessity that you need to make a move or is that like siyad said you have a great passion you always had a passion and you want to come into it if the passion is actually driving what you want to do then i think that would be a, may not be a bad idea to consider doing that but if it's anything else uh, you know in terms of career prospects or whatever i think that you may have to do your homework i mean that's my general idea about careers in in uk if, if people think about coming to uk i think people have said that in general uk the problem is there is a need i think most areas a need is there the problem is a visa yeah and it depends on how bad the company wants to have you so you have to go for a rare area then the government the, most of the companies cannot uh, go through the loopholes of immigration laws you know because it had to cut down their problems like doctors has a lot of scope because they need a lot of doctors so most of uk government policies is 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 guided by the need that they have the supply and demand situation when the demand is more they need to make their laws a little bit more lax so that's just for people here. so you it's a changing goal post the, the 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 demand here so they keep on looking at what's the data science artificial engineering machine learning may, may become a big thing for the next 5 to 10 years so it'll it be more in demand than they might need more people uh, in that area so that's something you got to in mind um uh, just to uh, add some uh, add on to it no, no, yes, um, can, can i come on that too yeah, yeah, yes i'm going um if you are really passionate about it i mean some people are you know they might not be happy with what they are doing and i would agree with uh, you know namsit on that but just to add if you are really keen uh, the, uh, you know take the certification by google there is a, a google data uh, you know um there there is completely a route in there um, data scientist route so take that certification parallel to what you are doing so continue with your um, uh, you know uh, your uh, project management parallelly take that certification and see how it is sometimes it might not be as good as you think <laughs> so you know you might not like it i don't know so if you still think actually it is good and it's your career, uh, uh, you know uh, then take that certification uh, then slowly you know uh, if you get a job move on to that so i, I would uh, you know uh, definitely agree with the namsit on that but as i said it really depends upon your passion if you are really passionate just you know look at this certification i put a link in the chat uh, some you know some time ago so have a look in there it has got uh, all the information about that data track from google and that is very very valid i mean when i i recruited few people in that area and if they have that google certification in data science that is a good way to cr you know get crash in you will be considered and from that it's an entirely you know up to your skills but you will be definitely considered with that certification
Okay. Uh, but having, but so uh, there's one more question and then we'll move on to Rubas and Amshit to actually wind up the q &A Yeah, Dr. Riaz, I'm just mindful of the time. We are, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We are nearly three hours onto the event. Yeah, there's a, say, says, I chose biomaths as an option. I don't know if this question has been answered. Biomaths as an option, uh, is computer science necessary for a data analyst uh, job? I mean, there's probably somebody who's pretty young. So they chose biomaths. The question is, is computer science necessary? For a data analyst. For whom the question is for? Sorry. Anybody, I mean, anybody uh, can take it. Uh, is there, uh, it's Mohammed Amjad. I don't know if he's still here. Yeah. I think in the UK it is not. Um, we can, basically, if you know the, if you know the language, uh, basically the skill, if you have the skills, if you know Python, if you know maths, and if you have experience, then it doesn't matter which uh, uh, you know, degree you have done. But in India, it might be different. Okay. So, uh, uh, Rubas, uh, and, uh, and I'm sure over to you guys to wind up the, the, the q and I mean, unless, uh, I think we can, we can try to close it officially. And then I think uh, the people are really keen can, I think unofficial, we can, uh, we can continue maybe for a few more minutes. Yeah, Rubas and Namshit, go on. Yeah, Nam Nam Namshit, I think we have covered most of the questions. There might I be a few questions. Have. I don't know if Namshit had something else. I think he had, I thought he was having a few more questions. I don't know. No, but they were covered during our discussion, Ria. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Rubas, go ahead then. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I'm not able to see any more questions, which actually hasn't been covered or, you know, been replied in the chat. Um, should I actually invite Dr. Mr. Zakari? I think because... Yeah, uh, Zakari sir, uh, sir, Zakari sir. Yeah, we can try to um, actually wind it up now. Zakari sir, is still there? No, I think, um, yeah, I can't see him in the chat room. So, maybe Riyaska, if you can... Uh, um, let me see if anybody from CG is still there. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, uh, I think CG, um, who's that? Is that um, um, Anas? You still there? No, sir. Anas, sir, is on, not, not on like. Is Zagresa, Zagresa go, gone? Uh, I mean, if he's not there, then we can wind up, yeah? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Siddika, do you want to wind this up now then? Dr. Siddiq? No, it's okay, Riyas. You you wind up now. Just uh... okay. So um, again, um, like most of our talks, you know, we start off with one and a half, two hours, and then it goes on because the uh, it just goes to show, you know, because um, you know, these are, I mean, to be honest, data, data science, all this uh, as as a non IT person, is a, it was an abstract concept to me, uh, and I think uh, the guys have done a wonderful job in actually putting it into a real life scenario for for a layman like me. Uh, and I, I'm sure because of the in, uh, the level of uh, uh, the, the importance of the topic and, and the level of intensity of the discussion and interaction, uh, it did last for three hours. Uh, and that's quite commendable to the team. I hope all of your questions have been answered. Uh, I, I believe you tried to uh, engage as much as possible. Of course, you know, these are, uh, we can't cover everything, as you know, these are vast topics. Uh, we will be looking to do a lot of these in future. Um, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to say a big thanks to CG again uh, for all the organizational work, the behind the scenes work, uh, getting all the registrations done, uh, doing all the, um, you know, the information provision, uh, and also a big thanks to our, our, um, our panelists and the speakers uh, for the time. As you know, it takes a lot of time to do this, um, you know, the proprietary work. Uh, a big thanks to all of you. You know who you are. And, and the, the, the biggest thanks to all of the participants, uh, you know, especially the participants uh, who are into this, who have been very, very keenly supporting and, uh, you know, asking all the questions. Um, and uh, I think it's uh, time to officially wind up. Um, so uh, a big thanks to all of you. Watch the space. Go to our website um, for all the other future events. We tend to do this once in every two or three months. So we've got a lot of uh, new events, uh, product development and marketing, uh, which is coming up. Um, uh, we, we have uh, um, the... Um, uh, the uh, the 5G that's coming up. Uh, we have um, cyber security that's coming up. So a lot of exciting topics that is uh, actually on, on the cards. Um, um, so, so, so watch the space and a big thanks to all of you. Um, and um, we are, I'm going to officially close the, close the meeting. Uh, whoever wants to stay back among the people, I'm not talking about the panelists or the speakers, whoever among the in, in enthusiasts who want to stay back, feel free to stay back and interact with the, with, 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 with the group uh, just for a few minutes. Uh, thank you. Thank you to all. Thanks once again. And thanks to Siddika as well. Uh, 
for supporting us. Thank you. Riyaska, just, uh, just one thing. Um, I need to uh, thank Mohammed Mahmajiwala, uh, especially for this uh, you know, coming, his time. And every time I ask uh, uh, something, he is always keen and helpful. And he, without any uh, thought, he, he agreed to take um, part in this discussion and the ch uh, chat. No, but I want to say thank yeah, you. I, I, I got to say, I, I just got to add, um, you know, um, I wanted to single him out because, you know, I didn't want to single him out as a, as a non-Malu person. But sure. one, of the, uh, one of the learning objectives that he set before this meeting was to learn a bit, bit of Malayalam. So I want to see if you have <laughs> oh my God. Malus. You know, yep. it's a big challenge to sit in a, uh, in a group full of about 100 Malus. You know what, my Muhammad there. So well done to you. And a big no. thanks to you, Muhammad. And I'm looking forward to see you again. No, no, but I want to say thank you to everyone, at least giving me the opportunity. And I think that is a very, very good learning curve for me as well. Yeah, yeah. well done. Thank you very much. Uh, um, yeah, okay. Uh, so I think we'll, we should declare this uh, closed and we we'll let the people who want to leave, leave. Um, and then we can get a few minutes. And if people want to informally interact with, the, with our panelists, uh, feel free to, just for five to ten minutes. Okay. If anybody wants to ask any questions, feel free to raise your hands. Uh, I mean, the... The, the, the people who are, um, you know, who haven't interacted yet, feel free. There's an opportunity for you to just to interact with our, with our team just for the next 10 minutes or so. Are we unmuting everyone? Uh, I think I'll unmute all, yeah. Yeah. So, but, but even if yeah, I've unmuted all, but just uh, raise your hands because uh, just to avoid, um, you know, people you know, talking and disturbance. Yes, he has. Hi. And, and all the maybe other panelists, you know, those who, uh, someone who has a, a reasonable expertise in the field, uh, what are their opportunities for, uh, you know, either a self-employed or become kind of, uh, you know, entrepreneurship that uh, way rather than going for a job? Is there a, something, uh, an opportunity there? Uh, this is, uh, I thought about this, adding uh, the entrepreneurship in my session because, um, Again, you, you said um, uh, uh, exp uh, some experience in field. Which field you're saying? In your I mean, uh, you know, your data. Data science. Data analysis or... Uh... Yeah. So... Uh, the, the, the reason why I'm asking you is, I mean, obviously, you know, people, those who are, uh, you know, very uh, you know, business or entrepreneurship oriented, and if no. they have a, a bit of uh, expertise already in the field, now, is it there is a situation where, you know, obviously the big companies, uh, they know what they want to do. Uh, they have a lot of data, how to use that data, but it's also there is such an uh, opportunity there. There are some other companies there, maybe a startup or a small or uh, companies. They may be generating a lot of data, but they may not know, you know, the importance of it, how they can use it to improve their business or something happening in that uh, field. So is there is an opportunity for these people to go and, uh, you know, head them? Say that, you know, you are, uh, there is something opportunity already there which, uh, you know, they can help with, uh, you know, just like in our, uh, uh, somebody passing through our house coming and telling, oh, you know, your uh, driveways doesn't look, there'll be a lot of weeds coming. So yeah. that's a new technology it could change the, uh, you know, that sort of uh, business opportunity. It's, 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 a, it's a wonderful question, uh, Siddhika, because I, um, uh, I can give you one example. One of my, um, uh, one of my friend, he was uh, my colleague in my university classes. He he is an entrepreneur. He started a new company very recently, and uh, what he is doing is he is analyzing and creating some algorithms and machine learning algorithms uh, on some medical uh, areas. Um, no going in detail because I can't go for some reasons. Um, so my answer is yes. Always there is opportunities. Um, you you need to find a niche field uh, where you can help uh, the uh, industry using the data you can get it. Um, so if you have expertise in some of the uh, medical area, if you can get some uh, statisticians and data engineers together, um, you can uh, start thinking and looking for one uh, uh, company or one um, new uh, venture. Um, I don't, I, I'm not saying you need to have all this uh, as, as a partner, you, that, that's the way it works. Um, if you're looking to help um, with a lot of data, uh, uh, 
there are big players in the market but if you have a niche product you can you can specialize some area and you can give some more expert uh, you can uh, utilize that expertise and convert that into data and you can sell that as a product there is a good chance always does that answer Sudhika, or yeah, yeah i'm just a kind of a general question just uh, some thought came to me yeah. yes uh Siyad, i think there's a one question here i think um, from harun is there any field combining the mechanical and data science fields? Anybody that's basically anybody studying bachelor's, uh, somebody studying bachelor's in, in mechanical engineering, but he's also uh, interested in the data science field. So is mechanical engineering and data science, um, you know, can you marry that together? That's the question. IoT, I think Mohammed would be able to. So uh, I can take that one. So, yeah, go on. so I think my recommendation, like uh, any, what I've seen in my career, like 21 years, most of engineering, like different sites, they don't know, they haven't done any IT work. Still, they have moved to the data science, or data architect, or data engineers. So in short, I would say, yes, it is possible. I don't think so, it's not possible. As long as you are learning all this con concept, speaker, easily. Speaker. Can you hear me? Uh, hello. hello, hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, uh, the answer is yes, absolutely. Sorry, uh, Salam, I think Mohammed, Mohammed was answering it. Can, can oh, sorry. Complete? Yeah. Sorry. Go on, yeah. Mohammed, sorry. Yeah, so that's, that's what I said. Like, easily you, can, easily you can do it. There's no problem. I don't see any problem. Okay. Any technology, okay. as long as you're learning the technology, as long as you're learning the concept. The, the degree is the only one part, but uh, learning is another part. Easily you can move. There's, there's no problem at all. Yeah. Uh, Salam, you want to add? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, so I, as I said last time, you know, there is a place which, uh, you know, these things marry, uh, which is the robotics. Uh, so, uh, you know, I gave an example, I think in my last talk, you know, uh, speaking about the hands, the prosthetic hands and things like that. They're all mechanical, okay? And there, the, the, the machine learning and, uh, you know, the, the mechanics um, learn, uh, you know, kind of marries very much. There's a company called Houston Dynamics and there are some YouTube videos you can see if you search for Houston Dynamics, they are an expert on this one. And if you look at some of their machines, they are excellent. And that is, uh, you know, the perfect marriage between the mechanics and, and the machine learning. So uh, basically, uh, you know, how, when the robot moves, okay, you can, machine can, uh, learning can give the instructions. But the, to move, you need the, the mechanics in there. You know, you need the gears, you need the, all the ranges and everything there. So, Absolutely. If you are in mechanics, yes, there is a place in you know um, machine learning, especially machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence area, which you know, which is uh, you know what comes out of this big data. So these are all you know kind of uh, uh, continuation. If you like, if you have listened to my talk last week, I mean, this is you know very much close to that. So mm -hmm. machine learning, artificial intelligence, mechanics, these are all comes together you know in the in the robotics area. So you can definitely look into that area. Okay, that's great. Uh, I think uh, I think Hafjar, I think you want to have Hafjash, you want to ask something? You wanted me to be unmuted. I've unmuted you. Uh, is there anything you want to say, Hafjash? Uh, no, actually, no. Uh, the uh, earlier actually we had a discussion, right? I uh, mean, the, uh, those who have. Yeah, those who had a uh, experienced pupil, I mean, you know, those just wanted to switch their career to data science, you know, uh, it might be, I mean, it, it can be uh, with a passion or maybe they just wanted to the booming technology, I mean, just wanted to learn and, you know, uh, because, you know, why people are deciding, I know many people actually, those who had, you know, support, uh, you know, IT support or testing, you know, they just wanted to, you know, just get rid of the, that particular work and the routine work, what they do, and they just wanted to do and some something, you know, uh, interesting or, you know, uh, for those people, I mean, you know, how, how they can, you know, uh, you know, come to this particular area. That, that, that was my actual question, actually. You know, uh, as uh, Nems, uh, I think Nems point, I mean, you know, oh, what he was discussed, I mean, uh, you know, those who has a, you know, project manager position, uh, definitely, I mean, you know, that is not a wise decision, but, you know, those who have, uh, you know, five years or eight years experience, because they are just, you know, started their, you know, they are in kind of mid career, right? So, you know, definitely, I think even I, I would suggest, you know, just, you know, just go and, you know, grab that, uh, those opportunities, because, you know, definitely, I mean, definitely, you know, uh, where these people are stacking is, I mean, you know, they don't have a prior experience. People definitely, I mean, people, uh, all employers definitely, they look for the prior experience. And then only they will get into that particular, uh, you know, area. So that's where they stuck. I mean, most of the people, they stuck there, actually. They don't have a prior experience. So how they can, you know, create experience. 
so that's where you know uh, i came up i mean you know even i know i'm kind of uh, that person you know i started you know exploring this cag kaggle is the one of the platform you know we can you know learn you know data science or data analyst i mean you know there are plenty of projects you know real time projects where you can work on it and okay. people are there to help you and guide you so that you know the, these uh, ex, i mean these uh, projects you can you know put into your resume or cv and definitely i mean you know people will i, I think employees will consider that that is the i don't know uh, because you know those people are uh, sitting here i think panelist i mean uh, is this uh, projects definitely i mean you know when they are hiring or you know in their uh, in their to project or you know these projects they'll consider or not i mean you know in your experience that is what i, I just wanted to know yeah i i, I want to add that uh, on that uh, uh, you know the question and the suggestion yeah sorry. can i who's that sorry uh, shabir yeah yeah, yeah shabir yeah. you go on. Yeah, sorry uh, yes uh, you are right uh, uh, half jash yeah uh, you know um, in my company so what we usually uh, look uh, uh, for from the cv you know say just a, just an example you know on salesforce when you do the uh, trial hunt on on salesforce you will be getting the different badges yeah also when you participate in hackathon or the one you mentioned yeah that's an open source uh, real time environment yeah so we usually look um, what kind of project you did or yeah uh, what ka, what kind of hackathon you participate how many badges you have from uh, uh, from salesforce or from the google yeah so we will consider all these aspects when you you know in case if you are changing from uh, testing or any other area to a data science or data analyst so we usually consider this when we hire the people yeah i agree with you yeah okay um, i think yeah, we got um, uh, we got uh, suhana banu she wants to ask something uh, suhana <laughs> So, sorry. Oh, so is that Suhana? It's a, it's a he. Sorry. Suhana Bhatt. Uh, yeah, go on, please. Yes, sorry. This is Shahid. Oh, sorry. Is it Shahid? Uh, go on. I, I, yeah, go on. Go on. What do you want to say? Shahid, you want to say something? So can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can. Yeah, go ahead. I think your line is cutting off, I think, um, Shahir. Shahir, maybe you can text or you can chat. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe your line is getting cut off or something. There's something wrong with the line. We'll, we'll try to come back to you. I think, uh, Mujib, Mujib, you want to say something? Yeah, Mujib? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's some trouble actually in unmuting and muting when. Uh, yeah, because I've unmuted all, but I don't know. Uh, you're not being. Yeah, unmuted. it's. Uh, yeah, I was just uh, trying to answer a question that I know what Siddiq asked about. Um, I know a student, um, what he did is um, he uh, learned himself and created a uh, competitor analysis script using big data for a company. And he sent that to the company and he was immediately hired. So I, I was thinking if, um, uh, because you know, the computer analysis, somebody can do it uh, without any support from the company. So if a company is, uh, if a company is uh, producing a, a product X and uh, how many other competitors there are in the market, uh, somebody can easily analyze using the data. So he did that. Uh, this is someone I know, uh, he got hired uh, immediately by the company. Uh, so there is something I, I, that I, I, if they're using data, they can do alone. I mean, I, I think, you know, what Mujib is essentially saying is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a minefield, isn't it? This IT sector generally and artificial yeah. intelligence and data, it's data. you can do, you can, you can innovate, you can do new things. And I think what companies generally, I'm sure most of people will look at this. If you have the background, the science, the maths, the calculus, algebra, all those sort of things. And then you have the innovative ideas to think about it. People look at an individual saying, oh my goodness, this guy has got those skills. He's got the technical background, but he's got those innovative skills to actually innovate and do something. So this is going to be a, 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 a big, big guy for us. I think that's what Mujib is trying to say, isn't it? Yes. That's yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. nowadays it's uh, for, for engineers who are, um, um, who are uh, looking for a career, uh, these kind of things they can do, analyze, uh, do themselves uh, some sort of analysis as an entrepreneur skill uh, and send to the companies they want, you know, they will immediately buy it because it is, uh, and you don't need any confidential data for that. For example, 
competitor analysis you don't need any any uh, confidential information it's all publicly available so that is a for fresh people who want to enter into the field that is uh, maybe a good thing good uh, that's great uh, i think any more any more uh, thanks mujib uh, any more comments any anything people want to say um anybody wants thanks, to up and unchill and ask any questions yeah. so wind down and unchill sorry Thanks. Okay. So I think Dr. Riaz, I think we have already spent yeah. a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, to wind up. Uh, one of the things I would, I would, I would just as a suggestion, moving ahead. You know, I don't know if, uh, I mean, I'm just this is just uh, not on record, but this is off record. But I don't know, Riaz. I think we can see that quite a few people are interested in this data uh, as a new area. Uh, why don't we form a separate group? You know, if there is an interest among the people over here, I will ask those people to inform CG or whatever. Uh, you know, and uh, about about brainstorming ideas. I mean, people like Hafjar, you know, people like um, whoever asks the questions. It is just mainly, um, mainly. Uh, I mean, of course, we can't give anybody jobs over here, but it's mainly about you know, a, a, you know, sharing knowledge and then seeing no, what, what you can learn. That's, isn't that's, that's a good idea. Even um, I know Hafjar. Panel of Excel and CG, We can just try to form that group. The people are, who are uh, who are really really interested because I have just already said yes. So I think if people can make a note to whoever wants to be on here from here or through CG, we can try to, you know, I think Siyad can take the lead on that and Mohammed and Siyad can take a lead on that and provide the support that people. That's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good suggestion and we can uh, definitely do that. So I think there's Mohammed Shahid, he wants to unmute. Let me unmute, see. Yeah. Mohammed Shahid. Uh, can you find Mohammed Shahid, Rubas? He wants to be unmuted. Yeah, I think I can see him. Yeah. Mohammed Shahid. Yeah. Let me just... Yeah, yeah, I'm unmuted. Shahid. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is Shahid Riyaska from. Yeah, so, so, yeah, nice to see uh, Afjaz here in this forum. The first forum. I know I met uh, Afjaz earlier in a couple of other. Uh, yeah. So, what so do you do, uh, Shahid? What, just briefly tell, you, tell us about yourself. Um, interesting. So, I've done uh, different things. I'm in, in IT, I'm leading an IT IoT platform uh, team. Um, and, yes, primarily into the vehicle domain um yeah we can i can give more details if uh, yes in a, a slightly different offline forum so probably my question i have a quick question to muhammad here so i've seen um, in your in your slide muhammad you're uh, referencing a lot of iot um, components are popping to our backend systems right so the, yeah. one of my question was it's more of an infrastructure type of question i know i'm not, not an infrastructure guy so maybe uh, it's probably a basic question um, from a millions of components are or the the devices are talking to a, a back and I, IT systems. I mean, you know, in, um, as um, earlier mentioned, from from a, you know, you know, millions of vehicles are talking to our our um, uh, servers and and located in across the globe. Um, what what are the different and how, it's a stream of data, right? So yeah. when you mentioned about Kafka as a topic for getting the um, pulling the yeah. data from all these devices. Can you yeah. give a little more details about how, how those infrastructure will be put together when we have uh, millions of um, uh, data requests coming from from many uh, from many uh, household items or a vehicle yeah. or any IoT component? Yeah, so I can give one uh, very good idea. Like uh, I can explain like uh, if you see I work in Hive and uh, we got uh, IoT platform example so as mentioned in my slide uh, say millions of devices connected to the iot platform they generate data so what we do is subscribe uh, those iot events uh, using the kafka or another example i would say kinesis uh, because it's real time streaming we capture all the events uh, in say kafka and then we got our own transformation process which pick up the data whatever we need it for the data analysis or data science so as I mentioned to you again, like there are different tools and technology. So in olden days, we used to use MQ, MQTT, but now we use a services, say example like AWS, they provide AWS IoT, yeah? So there are different tools. They take care of about infrastructure, how they are capturing the events. So we are worried about how we're going to uh, subscribe those events and how, what exactly we're going to do it. So there are different tools and technologies available. So do we need any more detail in that again? Mohammed, sorry, do you need more information? Because just in short, I would say there are so many technologies available. Yeah, I think I think he's okay there. Okay, fine. I, I don't know if I unmute him. You want to come back, Mohammed? 
yeah mama yeah. yeah yeah probably i can uh, offline have some some conversation yeah this is good thank you and, yeah just uh, let, let me know offline yeah. like so uh, obviously this is just, just to make things easy i put the excel uk training at gmail.com email communication okay so if people can all the people interested can uh, put an email into that i'll give access to siath into that email and then they can you can start your communication that's easier isn't it okay yeah Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay, so and, that's uh, the first thing. Excel UK training at gmail dot com. I put the email on the chat window. Yeah. Um. Anybody else? Um. Want to come in? I think uh, before was it? Uh, uh, is it? I can see the name is Suhana. Is, is, is it gone? I'm sorry. Um, Shakir, I think Shakir. Shakir. Uh, I don't. I think they're gone. I think I can't see them anymore. Um. Yeah, I, we can't see them anymore. Yeah. Okay. So um. Anything else? A final uh, this thing, and we can just uh, wind up. yeah chai ko samay chai ko samay i think uh, yeah so okay i think that's it um, everybody um, big thanks to everybody again so um, if feel free to leave now